one there's this welcome to all gen gamers a podcast for people in video games of all generations starring pete door happy console gamer gamester 81 and jason heine what's up guys welcome back to all gen gamers this is episode number 25 we are here today with our good friend john gamester 81 what's up john what's up guys how you guys doing and Mr. Pete Dorr. Hey, Pete. Hey, how are you? Doing well. And Mr. Happy Console Gamer. What's up, Johnny? Yo, not too much. So that's my impersonation of Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and we are joined today by our good friend, Jumble Junkie, Tim. Thanks for being on the show. How you doing? What's going on, kids? Come on, get some enthusiasm going. Oh, okay. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> the show has been brought in. <laughs> I got some news for you guys. Mm. Did you know that Sega is coming out with another uh, gaming unit? Yeah, yes. um, actually, I do. Oh, yes, I, I do. know. The Dream you know too. Yep. No, it's actually known in urinal form. <laughs> yes, well, you, you guys are going to be pissed. No, no pun intended when I tell you about this, but it's called The Toilet. It's spelled T-O-Y-L-E-T. I guess they're, they're marketing in, in Tokyo and a couple more uh, select places, but you're right, Pete. It's, it's basically it's an LCD screen, and it's hooked up to a urinal. Of all things, so the whole object is while you're you're taking a piss, there's these games that you can play. How crazy is that? It's awesome. Yeah, you know what's no. a fun game to play on a toilet is like when you go into like a public restroom, you see like uh, the skid mark from someone before you, and you use your fire hose it off. You guys ever oh. do that? Fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> fire hose. <laughs> That's insane. It's Dude, almost gone. Ca- it's almost gone. I'm running out of piss. Well, what, okay, it what is I a fun game. What I don't understand is how do you play this game? Do you need okay, like an so extra long dick to play this game? Like, is no, this really a game that's suited for Japan? It is a game. There's actually two <laughs> games, I guess, for it, uh, Johnny. There's there's one called Northern Wind, The Sun and Me, and I guess the whole object is the harder you pee, the, yep. there's like a wind blows in the. Sk- there's like this chick with a skirt, and the harder yep. you pee, the harder the wind goes. Right. So yep. the whole object is to piss as hard as you can, and then you can <laughs> her skirt. How crazy is that? And then there's another one. It's called uh, Battle Milk from Nose. I don't know where they come up with these names for these things. Well, that you're supposed to compete again. You're supposed to the strength of your piss stream uh, compared to the guy who was there before. And mm. I guess they have this this uh, this image of this guy with milk comes out of his nose. The harder you piss, wow. You know, so the whole idea is they have ads on these things, and that's how Sega is going to make money by selling ads. So you you know you watch the screen, but shit, I and mean, that's crazy. What happens if you ever... blow your urethra? You yeah, have to see the, the the doctor after that or something. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd be a huge disappointment at this game. I'm sure. I'm glad there's no multiplayer, and I'm glad you have to cross train. <laughs> oh, I know. I'd always lose, and I'd be disappointed, <laughs> like hanging my head down in shame, where so, some Japanese businessman is laughing hysterically at me. You know, Johnny has stage down, fright. <laughs> tears are coming down my face. He knows. I just pre- I pre ordered mine from Roto Rooter, so I'm just waiting for it to come in. Did you? Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I, I gotta buy guys- one of those. I figured you guys would be pissed, you know, hearing about that. (laughs) All right, so we want to remind everyone, thank you, and continue to send in your uh, submissions for our contest to win Endless Ocean 2, signed by all of us and Rob Man. We've gotten what? There's about, what, 10 or 12 so on there, guys, right now? Right. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty nice. So keep them coming. This is going to be the last time we talk about it before the, the contest is over, right? Which is January 31st. And don't forget, if you make a video, please post it on our Facebook to officially qualify it. Yeah, I think there's at least two of them that have not made it to Facebook. They're on other places, right? I believe so, yes. So if if you're one of those, go put it on our our Facebook page. All Gen Gamers Facebook. So, hey, Tim, explain to us, uh, for those listeners, uh, like who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Tim, a.k.a. Jumble Junkie. I've been doing this YouTube thing for... What Johnny? We started around the same time. Like two we and started about years. the same time. I think it's about three years, isn't it? Yeah, almost three years. And uh, I don't know. Like, um, I'm one of the people that still kind of do reviews and stuff. I do a lot of character things. I have a a character named Mister Sock. I do a lot of that kind of stuff. I don't know. He's, I quite, like fa- he's quite famous, though, isn't he? Didn't he get into that whole? Uh, like, what was that award thing that you were doing? I oh. got into the top eight of the my vids don't suck on Screw Attack. That's what it was. A screw tag. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then everybody flamed me. Everybody hated it. <laughs> now, the, hey, the, the sock got... puppets weren't popular. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you made it, though, is an accomplishment in itself, right? You should be proud yeah. of that. 
Well, they, awesome. they selected it. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. I have never yeah. heard anything back from them, yeah. but I was like, Hey, whatever. I made top eight. So I don't know. I guess that's kind of a, a boost, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do. I, uh, I also have a podcast called operation kill screen, um, operation kill and it's, you know, high energy, lots of pee and poop jokes. That's why like the beginning of this podcast is like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Am I on the right podcast? <laughs> and that's with uh, dog in my lens and uh sinister moon. Right? Correct. Kind of, yeah. How many episodes Correct. do you guys got up right now? Oh, uh, I just posted episode nine. We did a pilot episode, oh. so we got 10 total right now. Um, my other podcast went, what, 18, and it went down when the website uh, Games of Me went down. So this is kind of reincarnated, kind of the same deal, you know, kind of the format, what we're doing, what we're playing, news, um, right? just crazy shit. <laughs> so what, okay, that website got game. Are you still doing stuff for them or? Yeah, uh, I do some Mr. Sock stuff exclusively for them. I have a Mr. Sock show that I do exclusively. But like, as for YouTube stuff, I mean, anything goes from my arcade crap, uh, my skits, my reviews. I finally got a capture device, so I can finally start doing reviews again. And yeah, that's, that's my deal. How many are, how many arcade games are you up to now? I have seven cabs right wow. now. Wow, you got a lot of space. I noticed, dude. I have. I bought a house. What? A year and a half. Well, actually, well, it's been almost two years. Uh, yeah, I have a really large daylight basement, so it's really easy to get games in and out of my basement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, uh, I had my father come over last night. We started. We're gonna start finishing it off. So I, we're gonna have power run there, so I can have them all running. Uh, right. Get my cool like grid Tron uh, black light carpet going, and you know, play some Cindy Lopper and play some Donkey Kong. I mean, that'd be awesome. That'd be freaking <laughs> awesome. nice. Nice. What <laughs> what games do you own? I have the first cab I ever got was Soul Calibur 2. Uh, it was a Mortal Kombat 2 conversion cab. So anyone who doesn't know what a conversion cab is, it's pretty much like, you know, back in the er, like the 90s and stuff, you see a lot of conversions of like 80s games or, or um, it was just cheaper than buying the whole cabinet itself. So they'd buy a kit, throw the board in, throw the, you know, the new bezel and art and all that shit. So um, that was my first game. Then I got... Uh, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, which was in a Rampage cab, so another conversion. Uh, then I have Time Killers, which, do you guys remember Time Killers? Yep, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Game's terrible, but it was just pure nostalgic reason, so I grabbed <laughs> that. And that was in a Crystal Castles cab, which you guys remember Crystal Castles. It was such a beautiful cab, and this thing's butchered. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I got a Neo Geo MVS 4 slot. Play nice. that a lot. Uh, what else do I got? I have a Wrestle War cab that's not working right now. I got to fix that one. Um, I have a 60 in 1 cab that I built, which is cool. It's just got 60 of all the classic 80s vertical games. You know, your Donkey Kongs, your Galagas, uh, Centipedes, etc., etc. Um, and right now, I'm currently restoring a Donkey Kong because that's like my game of choice. Like Gamesters. And that's a good segue into Gamester. Mm-hmm. Don't you yeah, have a little story to tell us? Yeah, news there. I, I did, um, and Jason uh, sent me a text about what last week. Sometime, Jason yeah. about Donkey Kong. Yeah. You're like, "Hey, there's a thing on Craigslist. Check it out." And I'm watching the Seahawks playoffs game, right? And I see it, and I go to Craigslist, and this guy's selling a Donkey Kong cab for uh, 350 bucks. I noticed right away it wasn't it wasn't an original cab because I noticed it was orange, uh, where the original Donkey Kong is is either red or uh, light blue. So basically what I think we did, we took a Donkey Kong Jr. cab, or uh, I think at one point it was a Nintendo Versus cab as well. It's, they're all modeled the same, but uh, it's, got, it's in really good shape. Uh, the joystick's not original. The buttons aren't original. But other than that, uh, it plays great. So uh, right, right, I went home after the game. I talked to the wifey. I'm like, uh, there's this game I've always wanted. And she's, <laughs> she knows I'm a huge Donkey Kong fan, right? And yeah. she's like, okay. She's like, okay. You know, so... Uh, she agreed, and at that point, uh, Jason and I went and, and picked it up. He helped me out. We put in his uh, in his in, in his infinity, and uh, it's been it's, it's really great. It's a good game, one of my favorites. So I'm excited now. I'm up to six arcade caps myself. So uh, well, that's really here's, fun. Here's a question: Like, how much is that? That's a good deal, three hundred fifty dollars, right? Yeah, it's an excellent deal. Actually, Gamester called me right. on Skype, and he's like, <laughs> "Here's yeah. Tim." Donkey Kong cab, three fifty. What do you think? And I'm like, dude, that's a crazy good deal. Because right now, I'm going through a restore process, and I don't know if you guys follow. Well, probably don't follow arcades hardcore as I do, but there's actually a big Donkey Kong Kong off in New Jersey here in March, mm-hmm. and there's a guy that's restoring ten of these things. So he's inviting ten of the greatest Donkey Kong players 
around to compete. You know, you know Steve Weebies, your Billy Mitchells, uh, your Hank Chens. Um, so I have a feeling that's why I'm having issues finding stuff. But like the board itself is worth 150. Um, yeah. The control panel is probably worth you know 50 to 100 dollars itself. So I mean, games have got a really good deal on that cab. Who's the top um, Donkey Kong player now? Is it that Chen guy? He just Hank took it Chen. Back. Yeah, he just took. He just got the world record back. He uh, he toppled Steve Weeby. Unbelievable! So. It's like going but, back and forth, back and forth. That's crazy. But we all know Billy Mitchell has a plan. He always has a plan. Oh yeah, right, eh? <laughs> uh, you know what? That guy's nuts, man. He when he got the world record back. Uh, actually, when he beat Hank Chen's world record, he like released it on Hank Chen's birthday. He's like, guess what? You don't have the world record anymore. <laughs> uh, and I heard he didn't even get to the kill screen when he got that. So that guy is nuts, man. I, I don't know, that, guy, that guy's unstoppable, in my opinion. Is is it okay? Like I, I, you guys know Donkey Kong. I, I really can't say that I do. But can the score be beaten? Like they, they've oh, almost absolutely. taken it to such a degree. I'm guessing that it can it be beaten. Well, here's the thing with Donkey Kong. There's so many dy- man, dynamics, and there's a lot of luck involved too. Um, a lot of players will play very aggressively. When I mean aggressively, like really uh, dictate the barrels. Like people who don't really... I mean, there's a lot to Donkey Kong. Uh, you can actually dictate the barrels when they're going to drop on those ladders. And you can just keep lining them up, lining them up, lining them up, and just you know keep nailing points after points after points. Um, there's also ways, too, of dropping them, doubling up the barrels. And every time you guys jump over two barrels at a time, you get 300 points. And people go back down the ladders, jump over them again. So there's a lot of technique and stuff. And people wow. play really aggressive at the beginning. And then towards where they get towards the end, um, you can finish the game in about two and a half hours. And it's all about just, you know, and point scabbing too. You can do what they call toe jumping or, or taunting. Uh, yeah. On the rivet stage, you can stand next to Donkey Kong. When you jump in the air, you press over, you get 100 points. So you can keep doing that and build up your score. You're pretty hmm. good at the game though as well, aren't you? Uh, yeah, my top score is 240,000, which is, it's okay. But, what is, what is uh, the top score in the world then right now? It's over a million. Fuck. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, isn't it's that crazy? Game. I mean, a lot of people get to yeah. about 70 to 80,000. And actually, I just put up a video about the third elevator stage. And it's all about timing and stuff. And that's usually where most people get and they kind of flop. It's just, you know, he's really got to take the time and just learn the game. And yeah. I'm, I'm still learning things. Yeah, I wonder if that score will ever be beaten. That's absolutely amazing. I, I didn't think it'd ever it's, get it's beaten the last yeah. two times. The last two times shocked me. And then, and then I hear, was it yesterday this got beaten or a couple days ago? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's this, this whole Donkey Kong thing, just uh, once Hang Chen came in the mix, he's like a plastic surgeon, I guess, and he was inspired by the King of Kong movie. Just like, I mean, honestly, I think the King of Kong movie really... It sure did. It, it totally boosted arcade. I mean, I, I know it totally sparked my interest again. Like, you know, because arcades are dead, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I'm very fortunate. I live in an area where I have... Actually, there's another arcade opening up um, actually tomorrow in New Hampshire. And I'm very fortunate. I have like an hour away of two humongous arcades. The largest in the world, you know? I mean, I live so close from them. That's awesome. Well, one's fun spot. What's the other one opening up? Uh, there's another one called Pinball Wizard that's opening up, um, I'd say about an hour south of Fun Spot. And this one, um, I've got the, the girl's name. I want to say her name is Sarah. She, she volunteers a lot at Fun Spot. Um, actually, Fun Spot's going to be at PAX when uh, Pete and Gamester go. So you guys will get to see some, some Fun Spot stuff, which would be cool. But this oh, girl sweet, is like sweet. insane with repairing everything arcade. She's just like a, a wizard. So they got like 70 plus pinballs plus 150 plus um, classic arcade games. A lot of fighters, which I'm really pumped about. And they're going to have tournaments and stuff, so that'll be cool. It's, it's like the Who song, the Pinball Wizard. <laughs> I know, they're going to get cool. sued. She sure plays yeah. me pinball. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I guess that's something we should mention. I don't know if we ever mentioned it on the podcast. Um, that you and I are going to be at PAX East March, what is it, 11th to 13th, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Second are you going for the three March. days or are you going you're going for the three days right i'll be there all three days yeah yeah so will I. i'm looking I'll forward to it i've never day. been to anything like that before so we need to come up with a time and pl- place where we can all meet up and stuff you know and i like to meet yeah, i know splatter community. trigger's going too i think he's only going saturday mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. i think craig tv and less is going to be there i think dinky dinky dana is going to be there possibly and so. the weekend after is at cool. kong off which i'm thinking about driving new jersey to go see that 
I'm crazy. What, are you, you going to participate or what's the requirement? No, no. 240,000 score? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How many screens are there in Donkey Kong? Mm, you think I would know that, but I don't. <laughs> I haven't got that far. Yeah, wow. Well. What were you saying, John, about going down to Vegas and seeing what? Oh, um, yeah. So I was going to go. Uh, Vegas has a pinball like museum in Vegas. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Ton, ton of pinball machines, yeah. which uh, I'm, I'm definitely look. I, next time in Vegas, I definitely want to head out. They have like hundreds. Um, yeah. Kind of like the, I guess it's like the fun spot for, for pinball machines. Timmy, have you heard about this place? Yeah, it's like a museum there. It's like a pinball museum they have. Yeah. It's, yeah. I love pinball, but cool. they're just so. But speaking of arcades, actually, uh, Jason and I went and hit up a local arcade this past weekend. That place that looks awesome. awesome. Yeah, it was it was called uh, Golfland and it's in Mesa, and man, I had a good time. What do you think, Jason? It was you his know, first time there. Yeah. Well, what's funny is we've been talking about this for months. You've been like, "Yeah, look, there's this place called Golfland." Like, I was thinking it was like a mini golf, right? And then I'm finding out it's a water park. It's mini golf. It's got bumper cars, it's got bumper boats, it's got it's all this crap, right? And then, oh yeah, you know, there's an arcade in there, we should check it out. And then John busts out and says, yeah, dude, it's like a really good arcade, it's got some retro stuff, it's got some modern stuff, it's got some 90s stuff. Dude, the place is amazing. It was incredible. It's inside this big friggin' castle. Wow. It's like Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Only I, in the I States noticed- do you guys have stuff like that. I mean, like, God, we don't have anything like that up here. That's so you cool. You guys have Molson and ketchup chips. That's and Smarties, yeah, real Smarties. <laughs> yeah. When you're right right off. It was pretty dead in there. Was it, John? When you go, is it usually that dead when you go, or it just seem like a ghost? You know, there? it's 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 definitely wintertime, and this time of year, it's definitely slower. But you go in the summertime, the place is packed. You know, we went on a Friday night, and you're right. There's probably maybe I don't know a dozen people in there, uh, but the place isn't hurting for money. I mean, they had some really nice brand new cabs. They had H two O overdrive, Pete. I saw that. They'd be so jealous. I want. No, I want to play it. <laughs> it looks awesome. That game is incredible. Okay, so you enter your pin, right? You guys remember? Well, they also have Rush twenty forty nine. If you guys remember that, it was the same way. You'd enter um, a pin, kind of like log into your account. You could play. They used to have tournaments with that back in the day. Just that game was way ahead of its time. But H two Overdrive is is similar. And you enter a pin, you log into like your account. And it's basically, you know, it's Hydro Thunder 2, but they have um, achievements. You uh, has a leveling system. You unlock, uh, you know, upgrades mm-hmm. and add-ons to your boat. Oh, man. And, you know, just we've been playing the crap out of Hydro Thunder on live right now. It was just, it was just so cool to play that. So I want to go back now. Yeah, that became a huge thing in arcades. It didn't. Well, the, the card system, like they had an initial, an initial yeah. D, not a favorite game of mine, but a lot of people love that game. And they just loved upgrading their cars. It was the the next kind of thing to do in arcades. It kind of makes a little bit of sense. Something that you can upgrade to make you go back Mm -hmm. type of thing. Sounds pretty good, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, in this case, instead of a card, it was just basically a four-digit pin. And I don't know if it works on other H2 overdrive units or if it's just this one or if it's, I don't know if it's linked somehow. But, I mean, I know Jason was loving I was loving it, too, because I'm a huge Hydro Thunder fan. And this is by Raw Thrills, uh, but they did a great great job with it if you're, you're a big eight, like hydro thunder fan definitely check out this game if you can yeah if you can find it it's, you're gonna you're not gonna regret it well, you know raw thrills has been doing for the last at least two or three years raw thrills has been doing all sorts of you know new generation uh, arcade type games you know they did um um oh i can never think of it <sighs> they, did, they did um oh um fast and furious yeah fast they and did. furious they did the super bikes fast and furious they did uh, there's there's a whole host of them they did they did buck hunter which I don't know if you guys ever played Buck Hunter, the shooting game. Mm-hmm. Did that one? Uh, that game rules. Right. Only, only in the states, I guess you would see that game. <laughs> uh, and not only did they have like new shit, they had like really old retro stuff too. They had a whole line with like Frogger, Pac Man. Uh, they had Donkey Kong. Um, they had uh, Daytona USA two, which is kind of one you don't see every day for an Four older system. Four of them. Four of them hooked up. Yeah, which is six cool. Hydro Thunders, six twenty forty Rush twenty forty nines. They had initial D four, initial D three, initial D five, DX. They had yeah all kinds of shit in there. They had uh, I saw Guilty Gear dual screen and that Street Fighter four. Oh yeah, 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 dual screen. Wow. Mm -hmm. MK three. They had Qbert. I saw four player Simpsons. Just trying to think. It was it was a really cool spot. And and honestly, that's that's how far from us, John. Fifteen minutes. Twenty minutes. 
Do I be there? We, every day. we were there. For, dude, yeah. we were there for uh, two and a half hours, and I think I spent ten bucks. Yeah, I spent like just 10 playing games. I mean, it's because the games are like quarter fifty cents. That's the way know? it should be a quarter, like you know, one one yeah. deal. Let's see, like I go to Fun Spot, I only get five bucks out, and that'll last me like six seven hours. But again, again, Donkey Kong game will last me about a half hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Dave and Buster's charges you like what a dollar fifty buck, or some game, buck a game kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, Street Fighter was packed. Well, of course, you guys probably saw Street Fighter videos. Four. Yeah, yeah, Street Fighter Four, Johnny. We thought about nice. you. We saw it. We're like, man, Johnny come in here and own all these dudes. Well, I don't think so. Like, <laughs> <laughs> me and Jumble Junkie played a lot online, and we played against a lot of people online. And there's some amazing players out there. It's you know, with that's a cool thing with online playing Street Fighter. Now you really are humbled a lot of times. You know, like I, I, I thought I was a pretty good Street Fighter player, and I think I am. But there's way better players out there. Oh yeah. You know? Uh, jumble how, how have your experiences been lately um like i'm at a point now like i'll get up to like 1500 player points and then i just get to the point where these people just freaking annihilate me like yeah they just they just had a combo reset combo reset and you know just destroy i, I can't even do anything and um, i'm a belrog player and some people just just know how to shut me down that's really sad but um, it's, it's- I, yeah, I, I've kind of accepted that I'm a senior citizen in the world of Street Fighter now. I think <laughs> I can accept that. I can say stories like, I used to be really good at Street Fighter 2 in the Alpha series, which I did. But I, this, this is like a n- younger generation now. I'm telling you, like, so, like we had Baruti on the show. And that guy is amazing at Street Fighter. Go check out his videos. That guy is good. Oh, I did. I, I was watching his troll videos, and he was just trolling people with Dan. It was hilarious. I know. And he's funny too about it too, but he's excellent. He's a very good player. He's come over here and we played it against each other. And he's like annihilated me at times. And like, uh, but I, when I told him, Hey, no throwing, you know, and then let's oh, get come on. Up. Like in street fighter two and street fighter two champion edition. Like when you yeah. throw, it's like half your life. I know it was crazy, <laughs> but I decided to test him. I said, without throwing. And uh, that's when I was winning all the time. <laughs> you just got to like, <laughs> When they're right next to you, when they're right on top of you, you just, I guess, like spam that shit. So it texts them because, yeah, the people yeah. will throw you all day long. All day long. I, you can see them coming in for it, right? You land, they land, and they'll just go. You, you can see them edge forward. This you're like, I don't think so. That ain't <laughs> fucking <you>, happening. <laughs> and that's when you like spam like a dragon uppercut and catch them. But some, oh, sometimes no. they'll be blocking. As, as you know, my, my most lethal attack is my medium kick. That Yeah, you know what, kick, though? And I've been awesome. utilizing that a lot. Like I saw you, how you utilize the medium kick, just keep distance and stuff. And it pisses me off, but it you works know, so good. <laughs> it does. It really does. That It's funny. That's the one thing in Street Fighter 4 that I, I had to start using because I'm like, man, these guys are just coming in on me. And it's just like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's a beautiful little touch. You can just, you know, bang them with that and keeps them away a bit. And anytime they come in and try to set up for a combo, you can just edge in with that. And they're not kind of expecting you to do that. So are you still playing with a controller or do you have a fight stick? No, I still do. I do the controller all the time. Oh, I don't know how you play like that. I am you. The problem is I started doing it on the 360 with a controller. Now I can't uncontroller it. Really? I I, I can. I can play. I actually Baruti brought me over an adapter uh, so I could use my Udon arcade sticks, which are ideally awesome. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't get used to playing it anymore. Where I play Street Fighter 2 or something. No problem. I, I love playing it that way, but for Super Street Fighter, I've got to do that. Are you buying the arcade edition? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I although I've heard they've like I like to play Guile a lot too. Like I'm I'm really big in the charge characters. Yeah. Um, and I heard they just utterly made Guile the worst character in the game now, which kind of bums me out because I really like Guile a lot. That's too bad but, because uh, he wasn't overpowered as is. So. Well, I heard in Street Fighter Four he was crap and then i guess they made him pretty decent in super street fighter 4 but i heard they're just nerfing him again to make him crap but i don't know i don't know i i think if you're good with a character no matter if it they quote unquote nerf totally. it you know totally you're still gonna be good yeah. like they all say dj sucks but i've seen people just annihilate me with dj yeah if you know how to cross Speak- up do all the cross ups and all that so go on john go for it uh, oh yeah so, i'm sorry let me jump in but uh speaking of controllers i know tim you were mentioning on your podcast uh, about the uh, SNK coming out with a Neo Geo pad for the PS3. Yeah, that that looks really cool. And I heard Play Asia is like already sold out of those things. Fuck, Wait, really? what is it? It's a Neo Geo pad for the PS3. Let me check. It's got like by the, SNK. Uh, yeah, SNK. It's it, it's just designed like the old AES style. Oh, nice. Which wasn't very good because it wasn't weighted. 
You know, I remember I remember playing at home. I'm just like I kept kept moving the goddamn uh, joystick. I hate those small unweighted joysticks. I don't know. I don't know why everybody's rants and raves about them. Wait, it's it's right, the um, it? it's the regular hand controller, right? It's not the arcade stick. No, it's the hand controller. Yeah, the arcade stick. That'd be cool. Yeah, oh, the hand one of those big wood okay. ones again. Oh, so you're talking about like what that were they used for the um the CD unit? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Is it gonna be wireless or is it plugged in? I, I believe remember. it's plugged in. I, I remember seeing this thing before. I think it's plugged. I could be I wrong guess, though. Trying I got to really good page. response though. I like I like SNK's controllers though. I think they made really good analog sticks and stuff. I like the feel to them. New wood. Of course it was. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell him what to do. Don't what to do. God damn it. <sighs> so I guess we haven't really brought up the whale this episode. What, we're about half hour into it? We haven't brought up the whale at all? Don't talk about me like that, gamester. <laughs> <laughs> where, have, we decided where the, have we decided where the whale is? Well, I think Jason, well, okay, do you have the whale? Let's, okay. I want to take charge of the situation for a brief moment here. Now, the last we knew is that Jason went outside to have a look for it. And he's fucking giving us this bullshit. Oh, it's not there. I don't know what's there. There was water in the pool. There's less water in the pool. Jason, just own up to it for crying out loud. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dude. Whoa. The whale like is dude. here at my house. That is insane dude look i wasn't trying to pull shit over you guys look i went out there i checked the pool the water was low i was like what the fuck's going on it's never like that i couldn't physically see a whale so because it was physically on top of you well he was on the roof of the house i didn't look up there he was sitting up there watching me having a whale of a time having a whale of a time enjoying the sun so what so i'm out there the other day right I uh-huh. take the hose. I'm filling up the pool. I'm like, Let's fill this up because this is bullshit. I don't know what's going on. Everyone's yelling at me, and the pool's empty. So, filling it up. All of a sudden, I hear the, <laughs> I, I hear this shit. I fucking turn around and look up. Here's a whale coming at me. Splashes at in the pool. Oh, wait, there's a whale coming at you at this point. Coming at Whoa. me off of the yeah, roof. Hey, off of the roof. Is, there she. Oh, blows. Hey, Jason. Jason, is he a sperm whale? What kind of whale is this? He's a big, big whale. That's all I know. <laughs> a big whale. Okay. <laughs> he's big. Trust he's me. big. Yeah, sperm whale. Sure. Fitting, okay. <laughs> Very big. All right. Go. So, so you have, he's at your place. Yeah. He's at, wow. yeah. He jumped in the pool and we were splashed around and playing. He's like, man, this is crazy here. You know, I like it. But he approached me. He's like, you know, what's going on with the music? You know, what's going on with the music, you know, industry? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on with it. You know? Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. And he's like, well, I know you got your record label there, Heine House Records. You know, what's up with that? And I go, I don't know. What do you want? To, what do you mean? What's up with that? Come to find out, he wants to get down. He wants to get down on a track. He wants to do some recording. He wants to get down. What? He wants to do some DJing. He wants to do all sorts of stuff. Oh, it, you know this sounds. It sounds like he's trying to do the casting couch with you. Yeah, I, I don't know. He just brought it right up. You know, we were lounging. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. So, so long story short, you know, we we're we we're hanging out. We were eating some kettle chips. He was, of course, having his sea salt and vinegar chips, <laughs> and um. <laughs> He was like, well, you know, let's go, let's go do a song. Let's go do a, let's go do a track. And I'm like, all right, well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Really? You know? So anyway, you guys, we did a track. So, so, so wait a second. This just so I know this before you do, so you play this, this, so the whale is talking now, I guess the, the ball gag is out of his mouth from Pete's place. <laughs> the whale was, has always communicated to me through his whale language. I just, I don't know. It just makes sense. <laughs> It's like, Chew- it's like love. Chewbacca how it's like Chewbacca how they can understand what he's saying. Yeah, you just know what he's saying. You know what he's saying. Yeah, so exactly. so okay. So you're like sexually intimate with this whale. Uh, the whale wants to have a record, uh, you know, record deal or whatever you're offering it that day. And then so um, basically, you get off the casting couch, go into the other room, and record a song. I didn't say I was sexually intimate with him. Well, we know that happened. <laughs> Me and Pete know this, okay? We've checked your we history. Whales That's no you porn in the past month. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> whales had nothing, you know, for a while. I'm, it's, I, I can put two and two together. It's okay, Jason. I'm not going to say that the whale doesn't sit out there and sunbathe and stare at me. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. But I mean, I understand. Yeah. That, that, that happens. Let's hear, let's hear the shit. Yeah. Let me hear it. <laughs> Gentlemen, boys.
boys and girls all around the world. I go by the name of Jason Heine. We got a treat for you today. Yo. He went from Pete to Johnny, but now he's kicking it with Mr. Heine. <laughs> what can I say? He likes my pool and he likes the sun rays. Yeah, and when he flips up his tail and the birds fly by, they tweet it all day. We were on our way to Quick Trip for a drink run. He asked me a bit about Gamester 81. I said, He's my neighbor, son. He demanded I go get girls and bring them back too. I guess he's got something for them to do. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Ho! Drop down and get your way along. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get it on. Get, get it on. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get it on. Yeah. The Indian Atlantic Pacific. He will swim it just to go and get fit. He's the man of the sea, slap down, pimping on the fishies. He's so slick with his bag of kettle chips, sea salt while checking out his game ball. He's got an iPhone app that checks the water temps and high and low tides, past the rise. <laughs> so what do you say to the whale that's got it all? I wanna just kick it some more. Hell, yeah. whale, we gonna party again? Hell yeah. <laughs> Drop down and get your whale on. Drop down and get your whale on, girl. Drop down and get it on. Let me see it. Drop down and get that whale on, girl. Drop down and get your whale on. Come on. Drop down and get your whale on, girl. Drop down and get it on. Drop down and get your whale on, girl. Oh my god. Yeah, buddy. Go platinum on that one, bro. Oh. All I can say is I know why the whale is at your house and not mine. I cannot compete with that. <laughs> okay, there's no way I can compete with that. Look, the whale was, gonna... was curious. He's like, what's going on here? Let, look at all these toys. Let's do something. So, you know. He's bi-curious. Yes, I understand. <laughs> 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 nice work, Jason. That's awesome. Man. Thank you. Pass? Thank you. Mace? Yeah, the whale, you know, he's 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 doing some things here. And uh, that song, it's available on iTunes right now. You can go and download it. Nice. What do people I'm search for to find myself? it? People, people can just search uh, Get Your Whale On. That's the name of the track. So it's, of course, it's under Jason Heine, Get Your Whale On. It's a, it's a single. It's on there. As of, as of speaking, it's on iTunes. It hit it today. But it will be available on Napster. Uh, Rhapsody will be in the Zune marketplace for all the people who like to stream or uh, you know, people who have Zunes, all that. So search for it. Well, Enjoy. All I can say is that all the money on all the proceeds from that will go into gigantic condoms for the whale. <laughs> so uh, that's, a good, that's a good thing. Gigantic. <laughs> Huge. Jason will tell you. <laughs> Biggest I've ever seen. Biggest I've ever seen. <laughs> for someone who's never right. heard the show before, they'd probably think that song's about fat chicks. It is. <laughs> no, it's about one whale. <laughs> <laughs> wow, these all-gen gamer guys really like fat chicks. We love them. Hey, Jason, oh. you need to come up with a dance. Like, we need to do a music video and shit, you know? Oh, come up I, wild dance. The ground. I know, I can see yeah. it. Actually, yeah. I, th I thought of one already. I, I don't know how it would work, but like, you know, you kind of like squat down like a chicken, but instead of putting your hands and arms <laughs> out like a chicken, put your hand, put basically your hands out on the small of your back and fucking just dance around and flap your hands just like a whale's tail. <laughs> With no pants on. With no pants. Get your way yeah. on, girl. Perfect. Get your way how, I don't That's know. On that, page I think that works. 65 of Kar a Karma Sutra book, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it gets added yeah, in there. Like... Get your way along. <laughs> you, you, get your way along. See... Page 185. I could see t-shirts too with a whale and say get your whale on. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> nice work, man. Nice work. On a whole different meaning. Get your whale on. You're totally right, Tim. I think people will think like who's never seen this podcast, heard the podcast, will think it's about fat people. Well that's Hilarious. what I'm thinking. It's like it's like, wow, these guys really like fat chicks. <laughs> What's wrong with fat chicks, uh, Trumble? All I know is we like all chicks. When you have to my roll sister. over twice, you have an issue. You got a problem with my sister? She's a fat chick. Is she single? No, she's seen uh, another couple of fat chicks, you know. <laughs> you have to roll her in flour to find hey, they them. All, oh, they all crazy. huddle together in one giant thing. <laughs> oh, all right, well, it's good to know that the whale's somewhere safe. That's funny. Yeah, the whale's safe. We're here hanging out. A lot of toys to play with over here, so. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is too easy. Not at all. I I, I, I sense some jealousy in, in Johnny, really some, some anger. Well, it's a bit of anger because <clears throat> I can't compete with that, <clears throat> you know? And I think uh, Pete's not even saying anything. He's just, he's just in utter shock right now. <laughs> he's just absolutely <laughs> totally. stunned, you know? I think he's feeling a little bad because he tried the whale so badly, you know? 
know, stick it under his bed, ball gagging it, being such no, a controller. Don't on regret it. it one bit. <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, goddamn whale trying to add me on Xbox 360 friends. I accept it. Oh, that's, dude, that's I did get a friend invite on on my Xbox from AGG Whale. AGG that's Space funny. Whale, whoever you are, whale. We we. I mean, it's, it probably is the whale. I don't know. It's got me as their gamer picture. They they no, they changed it to their own uh, whale picture now. Though it's, it's kind of weird. Maybe from playing from Jason's place or something like that. I don't know. Look, I give the well internet access and free range and whatever, but uh, I, I don't is, know. It could be a coincidence. Him. The, as soon as Jason gets a 360, all of a sudden the well has a gamer tag. I know. It's mm-hmm. funny that, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> 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 um. So, um. Let's talk about some games we've been playing. No, I don't want. Don't tell me what to do. Okay. Okay, let's talk about some games we've been playing. Fine. Let's start so with games? Johnny. Put him on the spot. No, no, games? don't let him hand it off to you, John. Don't let Gamester, him. what games have you been playing lately? <laughs> Johnny always likes to start with me. I love it. Sure, I've been playing, well, I've been playing Donkey Kong Arcade quite a bit. Trying to get my high score at this point is about close to 80,000. I'm not nearly as good as Tim at this point, but you're right, Tim. When you get that point, like that level stage, elevator level stage, is tough. Mm-hmm. You know, getting those springs down is, is tough. So, practicing a lot of that old school Donkey Kong Arcade. Uh, playing Hydro Thunder online on Xbox Live quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot of fun doing that. Playing Scott Pilgrim uh, versus the World the game. That's a really tough game. It's, it's really hard. It is a really tough game. I'm having a hard time. Uh, been playing Goldeneye on the Wii. Um, almost done with that. And that's pretty much it for as far as games I've been playing. So I've uh, been pretty busy. So how about you, Johnny? I'll throw it back to you. You can throw it back to me. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was off sick from uh, from work for a week. Uh, you know, a really bad cold. And um, but something that's kind of good about having a cold. There's actually one good thing, and that's actually catching up, playing some games. And wow, I finished Halo Reach. I finished Oath and Felgana. I'm at the end of God of War three. I'm at the end of Splatterhouse. I'm, I'm at the end of uh, Fist of the North Star. <laughs> Because I had nothing to do. I was just sitting there going, oh, I feel so shitty. What should I do? So, um, God of War uh, 3, really liking it. Nice graphics. Um, a little frustrating in some parts, but loving that. Splatterhouse. Uh, Tim, have you had a chance to play Splatterhouse? No, not interested. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you were an old school uh, Turbo fan or no. no. You know, it's funny. Uh, we actually had a discussion on the podcast, uh, ours last episode. I've never touched a TurboGrafx-16 in my life. Wow, yeah. Nope, not to me. It was always, you know, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Yeah. It was like TG sixteen yeah. was like non existent. Makes sense. That was like that for a lot of people. A lot of people never tried it out. But yeah, you know, Splatterhouse, I guess I got it for about twenty bucks from game deals and it was it's good for twenty bucks, but I would never play full price for it. And uh it's just kinda like a gore a gore fest should be good. We go around smashing the crap out of stuff and Scores coming out, it wears off on you after five minutes. And you're like, okay, and it's just some really s- bad platforming at times in 3D. Uh, and uh, and then they go to side view, and I, I I like it better when it goes to side view. It's more of my type of thing. So not huge on the Splatterhouse. I'd give it like a maybe a six out of ten at this point. But uh, Fist of the North Star for any of you guys out there who know it's based on an anime called Hakutu no Ken in Japan. It's called you know Hakutu Muso. Uh, really fun game. If you like the anime, but if you don't like the anime, you will be bored to tears. I think you're, you're just beating up ra- wave after wave of enemies and uh, they all explode into blood and guts as well because you're hitting all the pressure points on them. So that's kind of fun, but I'm liking that game. As I say, I'm at the end of all three of those games, but Halo Reach, I liked. It's another Halo game. Looks really nice, but it's another Halo game. Oath of Felgana, everything I was expecting. Pete, you should really try to get back to that one as well. So yeah, that's definitely. what I've been playing. Mr. Jason Heine, what have you been playing? You know what a game we all should get, you guys? <clears throat> Another game that I really like uh, for Xbox Live. I, mean, I know mm-hmm. we've been playing Hydro Thunder a ton on there, and that's always fun. And I don't think I'll ever put that down. Love it. That's one of my games, of course, Hydro Thunder. But um, Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. What? You guys heard of that one? Flat Out? No. It's, a race, it's a racing game? Heard of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good game. The Flat Out series is actually... Uh, it's kind of a hybrid between, like, Burnout and Destruction Derby. Hmm. hmm. So it has some really cool physics, and um, the game's actually fairly cheap now. You can pick it up used, but it used to be on the Xbox Live uh, 
arcade, but then I guess it got pulled or something. I don't know. It's not Why there now. Why did it get pulled? Okay, I have I no that's idea. Where it was. Oh. And I, I was reading up on some articles about it. In 2007, it was released on there, but it's not there now, so I really couldn't tell you. But uh, that's maybe one we should look into, just you know, to play online. So, All of us yeah. can play. You know, but what, that's what I'm looking for. At least four players and more co-op, or you know, whatever. If you guys had any, like, if you found Borderlands yet, because we're all trying to get that. I know me, me and Pete have it, and uh, we've been saying for Gamester and uh, for Jason to pick it up. Uh, is, have you guys found it yet? No, I haven't. It up. I haven't yeah, yet, I, but yeah, I definitely want to pick it up. You can get it really cheap, like 18 bucks used, right? I mean, I'm assuming you can get it yeah, for under sure. 20. Yeah. If you, again, totally Gamester, it. if you see it anywhere, pick me up a copy and I'll, I'll mm-hmm. pay it back, but then again. Well, vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. So yeah, uh, flat out ultimate carnage. I did, I did get that. So if you guys maybe look into that, um, that's really it. You guys have been really busy this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, just haven't really had a lot of time to play. I, you know, I've been playing a Super Meat Boy. Pete recommended I check that out. I oh, like yeah? that. That's actually a really fun, uh, really fun puzzle game. Did you buy it or did you try the demo? No, I just tried the demo. Yeah, the demo's pretty lengthy though. They give you a lot of levels in there. I was surprised. Um, and then the last one is Castle Crashers. That's a great game. On Xbox yeah, they patched all the, bu- all the bugs in there. Because I remember it was really glitchy, as some, some people were telling me. And then they patched it, and it's supposed to be great now, yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was... I didn't know it was patched. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's a good uh, beat em oh. up I really like that one. There's actually one game I forgot to mention, if I could just jump in here. No, nope, nope, sorry. It's, it's done. Done. Sorry, your time is over. It's over. Sorry. Yep. Nope. <laughs> all right, go ahead. We don't need to make you cry. Okay. We're sorry. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. Um, Doritos Crash Course. I got it for free. Oh, it's a free yeah. download. Have you guys played that yet? No, not at all. Yeah. Jason has. Okay. It's, Apparently it's the, the whale game is too. That's the only game he's played on his damn gamer tag. <laughs> is it? Oh, really? Yeah. That's oh, how oh, interesting. <laughs> so it's, it's a free game on uh, Xbox Live Arcade. And it's kind of like, if you guys are familiar with uh, the Japanese game shows, like, you know, even the show like Wipeout, uh, Optical mm-hmm. Course kind of game, you know, site. It's, it's pretty fun, though. It's for a free game. It's pretty fun. It gets very challenging, actually, because you got these, you know, um, different obstacles you got these things swinging back and forth and if it hits you a certain way it actually crashes you towards the screen which is pretty cool and you play as your avatar which is neat so that's kind of cool check it out it's free free to free can't beat it free good why is it free i don't get that doritos uh it's promotion. doritos yeah, yeah so promotion. promotion oh okay you gotcha she's going to xbox live and you can just download it for free it's right there mm-hmm. yeah yeah oh, okay cool I'll have a it's, a, it's, it's a little cheesy like Doritos, but you know, no pun look at you, look at He's you, unbelievable. he really <laughs> is, he is <laughs> fucking nacho <So>. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's all I've been playing. So, what's passing on to Pete, Mr. Pete Door? What about you? What have you been playing? Well, I went back with Jason and we played Pong. Oh, sh- oh, how could I forget? Oh, god, <laughs> we streamed that, dude. Shit. That's awesome. Yeah, that's we awesome. went on, uh. We downloaded, well, we like to call it Laggy Pong because we went <laughs> yeah. on to Xbox Live Arcade or Xbox Live Indie Games and there's a game called A Game of Tennis, which is uh, two-player online co-op Pong, basically. You know, flat out, straight up Pong. No, nothing special to it online. Just, you know, regular old Pong. Not hockey, not any of the versions they had out. Um, unfortunately, though, when we were playing it, maybe because I was streaming, I don't know, but I passed the host to Jason eventually. Um, it was really pretty laggy at times you know the, the paddles look like they were not hitting the ball but they were and the ball was a little finicky uh, pete pete I, I think it's safe to say here we talked about this it's an indie game and pete brought this up we think the guy's running the server in his basement that's what's <laughs> happening here i don't know what i don't know how they figure it out with because a lot of indie games do have online play but maybe yeah. xbox hosted for them i really don't know but we stream that on uh I streamed it on Justin.tv, on my Justin.tv page for like an hour, hour and a half, and we had fun. Uh, you know, I had a little handful of people in there watching us, and it was fun. It was still playable, even though it was laggy. Yeah, it was a blast. We got to do it again. If you guys play the real Pong, like the actual Pong arcade machines, they're just as glitchy, because we play, me and my girlfriend play <laughs> Pong doubles all the time, and I swear I have my paddle down, and it just goes right through the freaking paddle. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was only a dollar, so a dollar well spent for an hour of fun. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Castlevania Lords of Shadow on the 360. I'm trying to finish that up. Uh, I'm on the second disc now, which I don't know. I, they don't tell you your time in the game, so I, I think I'm like maybe 12 hours into the game. Um, 
some of my impressions the last time I talked about the game were that I didn't really like some of the mechanics in terms of the platforming and especially that Dan boss battle against that second Colossus. That was terrible. However, the more I've played it, uh, it I'll just say it, the learning curve to get the platforming down in this game takes a long time. I'm at that point now where I understand the mechanics of the game and how to jump from ledge to ledge without dying all the time. It's just very weird. I haven't played a game that has you know jumping mechanics such as this one. Um, it's still not perfect, but it's a little easier to play. But I've been having a blast with it, honestly. Um, I am just... Slight spoilers here in terms of if you don't want to know um, something that happens in the game. It doesn't have to do with characters or someone dying. But basically, I'm, I am just now getting to freaking the castle. Okay? Have it, unheard like A Castlevania game and 12 hours in, you just enter the castle. So the first half of the game essentially is like outside and these environments with rainbows and waterfalls and fairies and pan hmm. you know the, the mythical creature and all that stuff and now i'm finally in this gothic horror castle and it, it looks awesome everything in this game looks amazing that's actually one of the strongest points of the game is that it looks amazing this is one of the best looking games i've played this year or i should say last year um but no i'm really enjoying it i definitely want to finish this it's actually a really long game it takes like well long for me it takes like 20 hours to beat but I am enjoying that. Um, I'd recommend it to anybody that likes God of War or action beat em up games because that's essentially what it's borrowing off of in terms of gameplay. Um, I also picked up and played Vanquish because a lot of people were telling me to play this game, especially Comeback Kid, who's a big fan of it. Um, also, Mark from Classic Game Room gave it his game of the year. So I'm like, all right, I got to check this game out. Yeah, Oliver so, gave it a huge thumbs up too, who was on the show as well a while ago. Yeah, definitely uh, in Vid Ninja, and uh, it's it's definitely in, so far from what I've played, definitely not my game of the year. It's uh, just it, it plays like Gears of War. It's a cover based third person shooter, but it's just more over the top. Um, I guess I'll go with the good points of it first. The graphics look great. First of all, it has a lot of motion blurring going on. I think that I think I'm able to turn that off in the settings, but honestly, I think it really helps. Uh, the game look even better because it's very fast paced. So you're constantly moving your camera around and it just has this great effect to it. Um, also, you can just like in Gears of War, when you take cover, you know how you can sort of sprint towards cover In this you slide with jetpacks on your legs, essentially into cover. And it is so crazy and over the top that it's, it's, <laughs> it, I haven't really played anything like it before. Well, I guess the closest thing would be Bayonetta. It's made by platinum games as well. So I guess there's a comparison right there. But it's, it's so over the top when you're sliding around and you go in the slow-mo and you can shoot the enemies that way. Um, Story-wise, it's kind of weird. They kind of just drop you in and you kind of have to... I, I guess, I don't know if the story's in the manual or what, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the heck my motive is for what I'm doing. Essentially, I think it's Russia is attacking us with like robots or something in New York. That's, <laughs> that's all I've gotten at. Typical, so a typical video game, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's fun. It's some of the points that are not so great to me so far. Are, it, it might be a little too over the top. Like, there's very few points in the game where you actually get a break from the crazy gameplay. Like, it, you're constantly shooting the same bad guys wave after wave, and the environments so far. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I'm only about an hour and twenty minutes into the game. I just made it to the second act. Um, a lot of the environments look the same. So the levels after a while start to begin to feel just like the previous one. I'm noticing they're starting to introduce some newer enemies, but it's all, you know, that mechanical sort of futuristic kind of New York City style to it. Um, but it's, it's, it's good. It's definitely not, you know, 10 out of 10 from what I've played, but I definitely recommend it to anybody that's a fan of third person over the top action games. Really funny writing as well. Um, so the game's cool. What, what, have any of you played Vanquish? I played the demo. Yeah. And uh, I played the demo with Rob, man. And we just, we thought it was a little, like, as you were saying, over the top. I, coming from like playing Gears of War and, uh, and you know, say Mass Effect, it's just, just, just from that point of view, you know, from shooting, it's just so, uh, it's so fucking That's Platinum bad Games, though. <laughs> Platinum Games is very over the top in general. Yeah. Oh, definitely, but this one's nuts. Absolutely nuts. There was a game on the PC called Machinarium. Machinarium. 
Any of you guys hear this game? It's like a little point and click adventure game with uh, a really cool art style to it with a little robot. Anyone? See no. It? Really cool game. Um, now, granted, I haven't really played many PC adventure style games, but this one is right up my alley. Check it out. The way you spell it is M A C H I N A R I U M. Um, so, if you're a fan of solving puzzles, and some of the puzzles in here, I'll tell you, they're they're pretty tough because I actually downloaded this game a while ago, and unfortunately, when I did a, I cleaned out my computer with like temporary files. Apparently, that wiped out my game save as well. So just yesterday, I started a new game up, and the puzzles had me stumped all over again because you know it had been a few months since I played, and I was stumped again. But the most endearing thing about this game is the art style. The soundtrack is amazing. I actually just bought the soundtrack for it. Um, I actually bought the LP record uh, limited edition. There's only like 240 of them in the world or something. So I ordered one of those, got that in the mail. Um, cool little game. You can download it for like 10 bucks, I think, 20 bucks. I'd recommend it. Something that I played a while ago, but I forgot to mention it on the show. I actually played the remake of Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the PSP. Johnny, do you, you have that? Oh, right? is that, oh, yeah. What's that called again? Ghosts and Super <sighs> Ghosts. And, I forget what the... Is it Ultimate God? something. I was going to say, oh, I think it was Ultimate or... It's wrong. Yeah. What, oh yeah, they call it it's ultimate. A, I forget. <laughs> yeah, it's like ultimate. Yeah, it's, it's a good game. It's, it's hard. Is it still really hard as hell? Yeah. It's still yeah. hard as hell. But the graphics, yeah. the graphics are, are really cool, awesome though. Awesome on it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys I, played I the uh, the iPhone cool. version for download? But I thought, man, I don't think I could play that on the iPhone. It's good. I mean, for a dollar. Well, I got it for a dollar. Um, it it looks really good. It plays really good. I I mean, it's not hard. I finished it. Well, that's good then. Yeah, because I've never finished that game. <laughs> hey, you guys hear speak iPhone? You hear they announced it finally on Verizon? They're releasing it. The Ooh, iPhone four. That, didn't we already know that was going to happen? Oh, sorry. I, I, yeah, but they released a date now. I think it's like for early February. So. Oh, okay. That's crazy. We were all talking about that last week. We we're like, yeah, that's going to happen, and yeah, I did. So it's official. It's but a- yeah, they have some good games on the I- iPhone. I'm impressed with some of the games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some really quirky titles like you actually actually can get um, the action, you know, kind of action RPG Golvelius that used to be on the Sega Master System, and uh, you can actually download that there. I think it's, I think that's a dollar, and uh, is it worth a buck? Sure, why not? And Shining Force is on there. Fantasy Star Two is on there. Uh, this hmm. this and obviously you can get Final Fantasy on there as well if you want, but lots of quirky, cool games yeah. from the past. Yeah, the the problem with the, the touch screen, the D pad touch screen is kind of hard, you know, because I have such yeah. big fingers, yeah. it blocks half the screen <laughs> when I'm playing it. Yeah, yeah. it's not it's not like, too bad. I, like I play a lot of Street Fighter Four on my iPhone, and I don't know, I, I kind of got used to it, but it'd be cool if they made an attachment. You play Street Fighter Four on your on your phone? Oh yeah, it looks really good. Plays good. Really. I, th- I thought like a Street Fighter game of all games would be a major pain in the ass. That's not bad. What they did was they um they they made one punch button, one kick button, a focus button, and uh, like an EX button. And yeah. depending on what direction your, your little joystick is, indicates a different kind of kicks, so like sweeps and um, you know stuff like that. So oh, no, it's, it's pretty well done. It's I, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I was actually going to say, are you going to get a 3DS to get a uh, Super Street Fighter? 3D, probably not. Eh? Um, I'm not the biggest in handhelds. <laughs> I have a DS with like five games. I, it's got uh, about 18 pounds of dust on it. I, I don't know. When I play handhelds, I get really sleepy. Like 30 minutes, I like want to take a nap. So <laughs> I don't, I'm really intrigued by it, but I, I I don't know. Yeah, they um they revealed the official list of the. Well, let me just finish real quick. I did play Castlevania: Circle of the Moon on the Game Boy Advance as well. It's decent. Okay, anyway. They just officially released the launch list of Japanese games that are coming out on the 3DS, and get ready for this. No Ocarina of Time. I know. No Ocarina of Time. Uh, I was bummed with that. Yeah. Honestly, that would have been, that would have sold fucking a million systems. I don't know why. Like, why, goddammit? That's like my only interest in the thing, besides Street Fighter. So, they're going to release it eventually, but it's not on the launch date, right? But the, it's so puzzling there. It's that's like been their game of choice to show off at like, you know, E3. And it's, they've been showing that yeah. off since the, you know, since they first unveiled the 3DS. Um, I just don't understand. That would sell systems for them. Maybe, maybe the US launch will get it. I highly doubt that, though. 
I think I've decided though if they release like eight or nine games for the 3DS for the US launch, I'm just going to pick them all up as long as it's not like a piece of garbage. Uh, I think there'll be a few pieces of garbage. Do we have a what, what does the Japanese list look like? Ah, I saw it the other day. They got like some dinosaur fighting game on there. It's like Dude, Nintendo Dogs and Cats was another one, wasn't it? Something? Yeah. yeah. Well, I've never actually played Nintendo Dogs, but I've heard it's actually a great series. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. You know, like I remember, like at work, I had a, a real Nintendo fanboy. He was nuts. He bought everything that you know that Nintendo released, and I, I was really not into getting Nintendo Dogs at all. Like that was just not my on my horizon. And uh, he's like, "Oh, you gotta get it. You gotta get it." I felt like peer pressure to do drugs. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, maybe I should get Nintendo. <laughs> It's and awesome I if you haven't it. played that game forever. Like your dogs have fleas and they have them ran oh, away. Yeah, it and shit itself to death. Shit you know, itself. Like eating its own feces and stuff. <laughs> awesome. You know, but <laughs> Nintendo Dogs was actually a lot better than I would ever like to admit. It was actually a lot better than I would ever like to admit. You know, but I just remember one of my friends. Uh, he had oh god, what do he call his dog? He called his dog Sandy. And he'd be like, I mean, you, you had to see this to believe it. A grown man holding a DS going, Cindy, Cindy. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, what's happened to my life? You know, it's just like so fun. <laughs> what has happened to my life? <laughs> what has happened to my life? I'm good. So, uh, yeah, Nintendo Dogs and Cats. I'm sure the cats will add a whole new aspect of, you know, bathing your animals. It's going to be something brand new for everybody out there. Something you've never seen before. So there's gonna be a lot of pussy around. Oh yeah. Ooh. Hairy pussy. Yes. In 3D, no less. 3D pussy. D pussy. <laughs> they should have just called the game 3D pussy. It would have sold at least 150 copies to Jumble Junkie. <laughs> to Jumble Junkie. <laughs> Nonetheless. I think I think Sinister, Sinister Moon would have bought a copy, I think. I think <laughs> no, every- no one, Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole Sex box thing and, and the the sex connection. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. He goes, yeah, I'd play right. those. Although I probably would too, if I didn't pay for it. <laughs> I'd be yeah, damn sure. curious about it. I'd I'd let my friend download it and be at his house every day. Oh, what's creepy about that? though, you don't know who's playing on the other end. Oh, that's so creepy. you could be having some some fat, you know, dude, hairy dude, saying he's some hot chick, you know, and he's he could like be having his, sex with him. He's in his blue sweatpants with a big raging boner. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> having a whale that's of a time. Creepy. Just think about what hot girls, what hot girls are going to be having sex with dudes through avatars on Xbox? Really? Wait, wait. I am. What the, How the hell fuck are we, are we talking? About? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, well, no, 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 no. What the fuck are we talking about? Because yeah, I don't know what's going on. I thought it was avatar. like you guys were talking about one of those stupid no. Japanese games where you feel a girl's breasts or something. Please no. explain. No. I don't know what we're talking no, about. Tim, you can explain. Tim, explain Please. it. Okay. There was a company out there that wanted to release sex games for the Kinect. Microsoft pretty much put their foot down. They say, no fludge in way, mother fludger. You're not going to release this stuff. So uh, actually on my podcast, we got discussing about it. And like, we were just really like, we think it would be hilarious to be humping midair and like, you know, have your parents come over and be like, what are you doing? Be like, just You're standing the there air. naked, right? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the game. <laughs> it's a game. It's like the hot coffee for, for the connect. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. So they yeah. didn't, they didn't make it in production and. That's the end of story. Yeah. You know someone's going to do... Well, the Connect has already been like hacked and crap already, so you know someone's going to do something very inappropriate with it. Or, you know, they have like that big sex show in Vegas. Like, you know someone's just going to take the same technology and do it there. Yeah, that's so be funny. Better. Well, now it's all clear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I just should have made myself clear. I thought, you know, we were talking about the 3D pussy and then kind of got into that, so... <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I have a bad influence on this podcast. Oh, you do. We, were, we were getting bad. I think the whales had a bad influence on us. <laughs> you know what's really funny? I would say about your podcast. Like the beginning is generally very serious, and then towards the end of the podcast, I'm like fucking laughing my ass off because <laughs> you guys just I don't go know what it is. We've actually heard that quite a bit. You yeah. get silly yeah. at the end, and I love it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think we just start getting loopy. You know, like when it's like three in the morning. AGG and- gone wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's funny. Serious. Like when you th- listen to the first few episodes of the podcast, we're so fucking serious, and I think mm-hmm. we're still kind of getting to know each other, right? Like I didn't want to offend anybody, kind of thing at the beginning, I, you know, for sure. And you're well, yes, Peter, you have a very nice collection of video games. It is excellent. <laughs> it is almost <laughs> much as my collection of erotic video games. 
Yeah, I know. I think it'll See, start the podcast to me six. is like your true personalities come out. Like you guys have your shows and stuff. Like you guys are serious on the shows, but like even like I used to years ago when I talked to Johnny and stuff, we just bust balls, you know. I know. Uh, I like I like the whole ball busting and having fun. It is the sure. real aspect of it. This I think this is actually how we really act in normal life. And I'm not saying that we are, like I'll say personally for my show that I act any different, but I kind of want to present some things a certain way. I don't be going, "Hey, motherfuckers, welcome back to another episode." <laughs> but look at Charlie Sheen. Like he's you know he's just a cool guy on a TV show. Then he's like punching out hookers and stuff. Yeah, he's an alcoholic <laughs> fucking madman. It's just his real he's, deal, you know. Well, he's an, he's an alcoholic on the on two, two and a half man too, but a different kind of alcoholic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not trashing Funny. hotel rooms over a watch. <laughs> That's true. That's true. His dad was uh, the same way. Just... The funniest thing. <laughs> right. Now. So Tim, what have you been playing recently? Well, um, I haven't played too much. The game I've been really into the past two weeks and uh, I got Donkey Kong Country Returns for Christmas, but the game that I'm playing more than I'm actually enjoying more is Sonic Colors. Like I really, really like Sonic Colors. Well, it's just good to have like a good 3D Sonic game. And, you know, I mean, even though I know you guys like Sonic Adventure and stuff, um, I, I love Sonic Adventure 2 when it came out. But when I bought it again on uh, Xbox it. Live, I forced myself to finish it and it was painful. It was very hard to get through. <laughs> but we're uh, yeah, we've, for that game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the Sonic levels are fun and stuff, but, um, you know, we've had 10 years of just really shitty or very mediocre Sonic games. But Sonic Colors, I think, is but what it should have been for the past 10 years. You know, it's really fun platforming, really great levels, great level design. The added little wisp aliens are a really cool added addition. The music's like straight up like, you know, Sega, you know, I don't know. I, Sega, I really, really, really like colors. You perked my interest. I know Pete has really been ranting about it. I'm not saying anything against Pete, but Pete, I know Pete really loves Sonic. And, and I, as I said before, <laughs> not all I the just games, like, though, I'll tell you that much. Well, yeah, for <laughs> sure. But you're more of a Sonic fan than I would say that I am. I not that I dislike Sonic, but uh, Sonic Adventure was the first one that I really liked, and then after that, I was like, eh. but Sonic Colors, eh? Okay, I'll look into that for sure. It's it's my first Sonic game I've purchased since Sonic Adventure Two. If that says anything. Sonic Adventure uh, Two wasn't very good, though, was it? <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was better than the first one, but I, the other thing that kills me about Sonic Adventure, and actually in some a lot of the, the later Sonic games, like the collecting levels, like I hate that mm-hmm. shit. I hate it. Totally kills like the game. Knuckles but Sonic in Colors particular. Is, yeah, but it's it, now this like Sonic Colors is really just balls to the wall all the time. I think, you know, mm. doesn't really let up. I mean, some platformy stuff that's kind of meh, you know, slows it down a little bit. But for the most part, it's it's nuts. Okay. So I'm playing a lot of that. Um, of course, Donkey Kong Arcade. That's I live on that game, so I won't really go into that. Um, Street, Super Street Fighter Four. That's another addiction of mine. And the other game I've been playing, I got back into again because at the end of the year, you know, we all do our game of the years. So my game of the year was Bayonetta, and holy yeah, crap, I, that game is. That was great, so wasn't it? Wasn't that great? Wow. Fantastic. Okay. So that's why you guys are talking about Vanquish. It's on my list. Um, even like Retrocalypse there. My buddy Retrocalypse, he's like, dude, Vanquish, you need it. So I, I really love those crazy, tongue in cheek, quirky, uh, yeah. over the top games. And Bayonetta is really the, that, that kind of game. It's, it's a guy's game. Bayonetta is hilarious at times, eh? Like it's so over the top. So wacky. That storyline and. That stuff. So I still don't get the storyline. I'm so confused. And actually, oh, I, I have uh, Dog in My Lens playing it right now. Because, well, you, I, actually, I, you know, I've turned a lot of people on the game. Dinky Dana went picked it up. Dog in My Lens. I know uh, Splatter Trigger's like, dude, you've been gloating about this game for a year now. He goes, that's about time I picked it up. But Definitely. it's not just a Devil May Cry. No, knockout. it's not at all. Not at all. It's so good. I don't know. It's very stylish. I, I, I don't want to say it's it's so stylized. You you can only understand it when you play it. How how amazing the the graphical look and levels and characters go together. It's it's just one of those weird things that that's good Sega, right? That's good old times. It's just yeah. it, to me. I mean, the Platinum Games did an amazing job, and they really just did a lot of throwback to like straight up Sega shit. Like, there's a lot of Sega references throughout the whole game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the outrun Space music on the little. Yeah, what yeah, was the one? Was it the, the the fantasy zone section? Was there a fantasy zone section on it? Can't remember if there was or not. I think there was near the end. Somebody can correct me. I'm sure they will. But uh, there was a really awesome stage at the end of it. Was it? How? What did it go into? Like you kind of playing some game. So Space Harrier. Yeah, that the Space means, Harrier level. Yeah, you're on a yeah. rocket, and that's straight up Space Harrier. There's another level. Yeah. It's like a motorcycle. I mean, there's a lot of arcadey kind of things. That yeah, I guess it was this. Space Harrier. Hmm. 
I remember that, yeah. Um, cool. And even like the end too. Maybe you guys cut on this, like the the big castle at the end of the game. That's like a straight up shot from Knights in the Dreams, like that castle. Mm. Um, there's an Eggman reference. You have all the rings in there. I don't know. It's just if you're a Sega fanboy like I am, it's like I don't know. It's everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> I'm a definite Sega fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever play Shenmue? Oh, dude, Shenmue is probably like my number two game of all time. Nice. Like playing that game, uh, like for the first well, time. Just and... if I ask you this? This is it's, it's good to talk to another person who's like a big Shenmue fan because I'm a huge Shenmue fan. But everybody around me doesn't like Shenmue. Like my most... best friend hates it. Yeah, Rob. Okay, I don't want to put Rob Man on the spot, but Rob Man didn't. I'll say he didn't like it when it was first out. And I was playing. I'm like, this game is awesome. I'm like, you got to buy it. He bought it. And then I phoned him up. I'm like, what do you think of it? He's like, that's okay. Uh, yeah, it's all right. It, it just didn't rub him the way it did me. I, I was like, I thought it was like a religious experience, but yeah. Like, you know, just roaming around your house, just be able to go around and open up every drawer in the house. Like, yeah. that's cool as hell. And I even got to the point when I first started playing the game, I'd go to like every door. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but honestly, if it wasn't for Shenmue, Half the games are out now. I mean, they ripped that game off. The sh- I mean, all those quick time events, that's straight yeah. up Shenmue. I know. I, t- I was talking about that the other day to somebody. They're like, oh, yeah, I didn't like all the quick time events in God of War. I, and then I think the person said, I hate quick time events. I said, well, I like them in Shenmue. And that was my, my whole thing. But I thought they were done well in Shenmue. What about like going to the arcade and be able to play Space Harrier? I mean, it's incredible. I love that. I don't know. That, that game, hands down. Well, buying I mean, all the it, capsule it's- toys? Maybe I should buy another. I love Hey, that. mister, let's play ball. Hey, mister, want to wrestle? Want to wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> oh, let's get sweaty. It starts out slow, but man, once you get into it, it's awesome. The it's... second one, though. Yeah. Now, did you ever finish oh, the second one? You didn't like the second one? The second one is where it sh- shined. It was... I never you finished find out what it. Shimu actually is. Really? So I never finished it. I, I thought it started way too slow. And they had you, like a lot of people like the job aspect, like uh, the forklift thing was really cool in the first one, but they had you doing the uh, the, the little Plinko prices Right thing. <laughs> oh, you, you only do that for a short amount of time in the game. It's very, yeah. very Yeah, but um, I got it's pretty far short. into it. But it was a lot of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So a lot of backtracking. There was a bit of that at first. Yeah, I, I, it really, I'm sorry. You, you really have to play the end. The ending is it's epic. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Popping it. Do you know if it's compatible with Xbox 360? That is something I do not know. You're talking about the Xbox version, right? Like so yeah. That yeah um, the I Xbox don't know. Version. I got the PAL version. I got the. Oh, PAL I have version. the European version for Dreamcast. Yeah. But it's all. It's all translated. Yeah. You guys are making me really want to try Shenmue again. I don't have anything against the game. I've tried yeah. playing it like three times now, and it's a good. I it, I definitely enjoy it. I appreciate it. I think it was way ahead of its time. Still playable yeah. today, but I always lose interest in it. Like yeah, I just a lot of people point did. in the game where it just it, it it gets too slow for me. Like I, I never yeah. get, I guess you can say, into the core of the game. Um, but like I, I got to a point where I had done everything I could for the main story, and I was basically going to have to sit around and wait for the in-game time to catch up so that I can keep going. So I'm like, all right, forget this for now. You know. A lot I of definitely, us, I want to try it again, again for like yeah. the fourth time. <laughs> well, here, here, here's, here's something. Tim, did you get it right when it first came out? Yeah, me and my see, growing up, my had my best friend, my two best friends were we were Sega guys. Like we bought Genesises, we bought Saturns, we bought Dreamcast and stuff. And so, uh, we, yeah, we bought Shenmue together, and we pretty much finished it together. And um, I don't know, I, 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 I'm not just not to toot Sega's horn, but really, they were like on the the. The cost they 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 I think started a lot of stuff. They were just too ahead of their time. And that's Way why they kind of and spent too much money doing it and went bankrupt. <laughs> right. So I don't know. Unfortunately, I was definitely well, say for Pete, it really was it the timing of it when it came out. As Tim said, it's like it was amazing to be walking around in Japan in like what, what was the year? Is it 1986? I think it was. The 80s. Uh, that's yeah. The, the game uh, the game setting time, and just to be able to walk around and people are doing their own routines. It was revolutionary at the time you'd never seen that kind of the first sandbox game of its kind well, I, like, I bought it when it came out because i oh, did I you it. really how old were yeah, you because i oh geez uh let's see what what year did that game come out 90 it's like 2000 was it 2000. like 90 2000 yeah, 2000, yeah. something 2000 Ten years ago already jesus so i was around 11, 13. 11 years yeah uh, 11 years. i think i was just 85 think- then but 
but just think of it as kind of like an open world game where you can just kind of interact, talk with everybody. And it's not like, you know, like Oblivion or a Bethesda game where, you know, whatever you say affects anything. I mean, it doesn't matter, but uh, it's just a huge open world environment. All the characters in the game are really good. And you got Nozomi. Oh, who gave yeah. me an e-boner forever until E-boner. Bayonetta came out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, though? I always thought Ryo was kind of like, he was gay or something because she'd be sitting next to him going, Ryo, I don't want to leave. I, I don't want to be with you. And he's like, uh, I must go, <laughs> you know, you know, I must go do Kung Fu with men. It's you such a, a quotable game. Like to this day, my best friends, we always go, Hario, how about the oh, yeah. dog? Like, we always go. Fuchs the on. Game. Fuchs was, on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, the grandmother. Don't be out too late. Here, take some money though. Remember all that stuff? Oh, that, yeah. that grandmother was like evil. Your father <laughs> dies in the game and she was like, so kind of creepy to you. She's like, no, don't stay out too late. Come back. You know, like you just felt like so controlled and your life sucked. It really did. Which isn't a spoiler, by the way. Tell you what to do all the time in the it's weirdest way possible. Uh, yeah. you know, People are going to be like, I've never played like, Shenmue. Weren't they going to make like 10 parts of the game or something ridiculous like that? I remember. Yeah, wasn't it? Like, I think, okay, this is from memory. I might be wrong. But I thought it was like six parts. Maybe it was nine. Such I don't know. Nine. I knew it was like some absurd amount that it would never. I, I remember when the first one came out, and my friends like, "Dude, they're gonna make so many more of these." I'm like, "I, I don't know. I just didn't catch on." No, no I didn't think it. Ca- yeah, and it didn't. Exactly. Was- like, so Pete's like, for I think for this game, for a, a lot of people got it, and I'm not saying that you didn't get it, but it just clicked with them, and it just at the time it was perfect. For the, a lot of people, they're just like, "Yeah, this is boring. I'm walking around. Nothing's happening. I want to beat somebody up. I can't beat anybody up. Maybe I can do beat up somebody tomorrow." And it was this wore them out. They didn't realize that it was more about kind of just exploring your world, and uh, and certain quick time events would happen. And ah, uh, it's too bad it didn't catch on. But that's the way it is. Don't even get me going about Shenmue Three. That is such a beaten horse. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, let me just I think that. Yeah. Like you know, it's a series that everyone beats me up on that I still have never played. Is Yakuza, which they say is like the successor of Shenmue. I've just been talking to a friend of mine about that. I, I got the fourth game and I still have not played it. Really? Yeah. Everyone keeps telling it. me to play it, but uh, I'm cheap. I'm gonna do yeah. it. I'm, I'm cheap with video games. Like if it's not like five bucks, I'm like, man, I'll pass. <laughs> oh, dude, you can get that for like fifteen dollars, easy. That's ten dollars on my price range. That's almost like a Donkey Kong marquee. Yeah. Key. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's 10 iPhone games for you. Right I'm not like you guys. You guys are hardcore. Oh. You're way more hardcore than I am when it comes to collecting. Well, yeah, you're, you're, arc- you're already full arcade setup going on. Restoring arcade machines. I'm you're like Goodwill guy. If I see it for a dollar, I, I grab it. What else have yeah, you been it. playing? <laughs> that's pretty much it, man. It's pretty pretty slow. I mean, I've been pretty busy myself with uh, my podcasts and my videos and try to squeeze in some gaming. I'm just... It's usually just Donkey Kong and Street Fighter 4. That's usually like my, my two drug of choice. It's it's hard to believe that Donkey Kong's thirty years old this year. I know, I know. It's and it's still. I mean, like I said with that Kong off, it's still kicking. It's insane how popular this game is, and mm-hmm. I think it's just going to continue to. I mean, as long as these records keep getting broken, it's still going to be like the game, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just it's probably one of the hardest arcade games I've ever played, though. It's so challenging. See, I think so I think Donkey Kong Junior is harder. Yeah, but they all say they, that Donkey Kong Junior is more pattern oriented as for donkey kong there's more random elements which make it more difficult but i, I guess it's just a matter of just playing the game getting non-stop good at it you know mm-hmm. and hey, also Tim, like speaking of retro go ahead go ahead also i also like with, with retro games and stuff there there's an end to them you know there's there's a point where the game ends they call that kill screen um there's multiple games that do it but it the board runs out of memory um and that's you know it's a one quarter deal it's not like games where they start doing continues and stuff much so they people say that's what kind of killed the arcades right Right. So as I was to say, uh, speaking of retro games, what do you think about uh, one game I've been playing a lot recently? I forgot to mention as well was is a uh, uh, Pac-Man uh, Deluxe DX. What do you think about that? Edition DX? Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that like was that? like my um, downloadable game of the year. That thing was awesome. Awesome. So man. good. Awesome. Well, I mean, if you like Pac-Man, which I mean, who doesn't like Pac-Man? But like to take a game like Pac-Man and and throw all these enhancements, but not like you know, totally butcher the series. Mm-hmm. Um, it's again, it's it's another game. It's it's a lot of pattern stuff. Like you, you got to train up the ghosts. You get the little power pellets, and you just eat them all up. And um, it's like kind of going back and forth from quadrant to quadrant. And it, yeah, it, some of these people are really really sick at it. But it's totally worth your buck. It's, it's so addicting oh, yeah. too. I mean, people don't think music- a pack of games addicting. 
the music in that thing is is great too. It's like techno music kind of. It's it's crazy. The visuals too. I mean, you have all these the visuals, different styles. Yeah, yeah it's, mm-hmm. it's so good. I definitely recommend it. Do you think you think Nintendo ever come up with a new Donkey Kong remake? Don't even get me going on Nintendo. I'm very mad at them. <laughs> Why are you mad at them? Really? Ah, dude, they're virtual console. I don't want to take a lot of beef for this. I don't want to get trolled, but it, it's not very good. It, no, it's, it's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Like, wh- wh- what are you thinking about it? I see. I, I I don't know. See, PlayStation Network and, and Xbox Live have so many. There's so many good games. So many. I don't know. They just. There's a lot of like arcadey stuff that that comes out and stuff. Um, yeah. And I feel like they don't hesitate to release things. When Nintendo, it's like. I don't know what their problem is. And I know you guys probably like that whole Mario All Stars thing. Mm-hmm. That, that was by far that good. The, it was by far the worst pickup I did this year. It was awful. They didn't do anything to it. Like it was literally someone took a CDR and burned a ROM on it and here it's worse yeah. on your Wii. And that's all yeah, you, should sell, you should sell it for twice as much, man. I know. It's unfortunate. I mean it's a cool little collector's piece, but you know, for me I'm I'm really into playing the game. I know a lot of people bought it for just for collector stuff. Well, just just as an update, um I think I think there was an announcement that they're going to reprint it. That's why we were here. Yeah. But, oh like, really? Those versions of the game, those they're awful. <laughs> they're really unplayable. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because the yeah. dynamics, I mean, you guys play Mario Brothers, the first Mario Brothers. It's it's tight as hell. It's probably one of the tightest platforming games ever. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, that these reboots or the redesigned ones from Super Nintendo, they're, they're just so sloppy and sluggish and delayed feeling. And that was funny, I was bitching about it, and Dinky Dana um, wasn't going to crack his open. Hey, I see my dog in my lens. They weren't going to crack theirs open, so they, they cracked them open playing. They go, oh, I definitely see what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I'm dying. Really? I should be dying. So. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even put a Super Mario World on there, which is crazy. No, no, they didn't Nothing. touch that. They None didn't do originals. anything. I ended, and nobody's it's, applauding yeah. Nintendo, for sure. Nobody's going, wow. Incredible job, guys. Sound it's effects? Ash cow. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't the CDs just sound effects, right? I mean, there's some music, but most of it's yeah. just like sound effects, right? Yeah, I mean, just, for 30 bucks. And what are you going to do? You know, it's, I guess it's yeah. okay for 30 bucks. Is it? If it was 50, yeah. I'd been way pissed. Yeah. That was my point when we were talking about this like a couple months ago or whatever it was. It's like at 30, eh, you know, whatever. But 50? No way. No way. Mm-hmm. Not buying that for 50. Uh, don't no, buy Splatterhouse for more than fifty bucks, everybody out there. It's it's kind of a novel game, but not not for more than fifty bucks. That's what I'm hearing. Twenty bucks, sure. Hey, why not? Yeah, <laughs> not for that. So, should we answer some questions? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, hey, all gen gamers, it's your bud Crow from the Retro Road Show. I was filming some stuff and taking a break, and some things popped into my head. First things first, I have noticed a serious issue lately. Johnny, Pete, I can hear the pain in your voices when you talk about that devil whore whale that left you two fine gents. I can only imagine the horrible and bitter anguish you two must feel. Well, fret not, my most excellent amigos, for I have here to smoke and hot twins that can't wait to meet you guys. Say hello, girls. Yeah, that's right, fellas. These beauties are wet, wild, and ready for a good time. No need to thank me. Just uh, consider it a late Christmas gift. So my question for you dudes is, what is the first game that you ever witnessed being beaten? Uh, You know, for example, by a friend or a relative or, you know, something along that order. I remember back in the day, sometime in 86, I think it was, um, it was late at night and my dad was up late playing Nintendo. And, uh, you know, I walked walked out and I realized that he's gonna beat this thing so I was gone out the door I sprinted across my backyard and went and banged on my neighbor's door so they come to the door and they're all sleepy-eyed in their pajamas and stuff like that and they're like what do you want my dad is about to beat Super Mario Brothers and they looked at me and they're like holy shit honey get your shoes get the kids we're going next door and me and the neighbors all sprinted back across the lawn and watched my dad beat this game we're all jumping around and freaking out and to be quite honest I think that was the first time that any of us had seen anybody beat a video game let alone myself. I would love to hear your memories on the subject awesome show dudes. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy all your channels and all that beef that's been popping up lately don't worry about that. I mean when I leave you guys comments I leave it for inspiration you know hopefully you see it and hopefully it makes you feel good about the things that you are doing because we really truly do enjoy them out here. So take it easy dudes this is crow signing off wow thank you crow what a great question yeah thanks 
Great story too. I love that story. Yeah, I just uh, I just found his channel actually today. Um, because I'll admit he sent this this video on YouTube, but my my share with you box gets so flooded. I don't, I don't know how you guys can keep up with that. The share with you when you have I kind of keep up friends. with it. I try to keep up with it. Oh, for sure. I can't even I can't even look. I know. It, yeah. Cool show. Retro Road Show is a yeah. YouTube channel. For anybody really who wants cool to just guy. go to the like if yeah, just go I, I have I got them in my box from one you know for the, one of the guys to I subscribe to and I think he's in your else box. Is, yeah. Johnny, oh, he's he's in you your know box? what? You just know he's just <laughs> waiting for that. He's just waiting. He's like, <laughs> You said it. You said it. I'm, hey, so. eat my three D pussy. The big old box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, great question. Um that's a yes. hard one. No pun intended. Again, Jesus Christ! What is going on? With this show? <laughs> so, Johnny, you, show? you get to open it up now. Oh God! I'll I'll, I'll open it up. No pun intended. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> Can't win here. Okay. Um. I, I hear I hear it coming. I hear him coming. No, I'm just talking. <sighs> with the answer with the answer with the answer. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so so, uh, gamester, what's the first game that you saw a man beat? Oh. <laughs> 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 Did you maybe your father um, beat a game or something and you were watching him? (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) You know, honestly, it's it's tough because I think for a while a lot of games, a lot of retro games didn't really have an ending. A lot of they just looped like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and you know Galaga, those games really didn't have an ending. But I'd have to probably go um with his answer and and just say uh Super Mario Brothers one. Um Mm. saw my brothers beat it before I did the game. Um, <laughs> just to clarify, <laughs> <laughs> no. So yeah, you know, I was in, you know, definitely had had, had saw it, and uh, you know, that's my answer. So I'll stop while I'm ahead, uh, Johnny. Oh, <laughs> stop while he's ahead. Um, <laughs> I, I think I was in an arcade and I saw somebody beat Star Wars, the one that you have, John. Honestly, okay, yeah. I think nice. that's back in the day. I remember because I used to be sitting, you know, in the arcade watching people play that game. I was just like. Just amazed by it because I, I think I just saw Empire Strikes Back and I was playing that game. We're talking probably 82, 83. What year was that released? I'm just that'll take me back. 83. Now, does that yeah. end or I, th- I thought it just keeps looping and looping. They go through the four stages. I just remember just loops, kind of right? getting to some form of an ending. I thought there was some form of, yeah, I just remember it going on and on. But that's, that's the, the only game that I can remember somebody you know, playing and seeing the Death Star get blown up again and again. I can't remember if it looped. I thought it ended, but maybe I it probably looped. Yeah, but that's the first game I saw anybody well, kind of go yeah. back for a long time. Jason, The Legend of Zelda. Really? Yep, I watched my brother uh, play through that what? and beat it the, nice. for NES, the original one. So you were sitting in the same room when he beat it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I watched it. It was amazing. It. Was there anybody else in the room watching you watching him beat it? It was just us. <laughs> You guys are you guys are all fuckers. Well, no, be, be yeah. No. So, Pete, yeah, like h- how, how often have you watched someone beat it? Um, well, it would be my grandpa. It was a very, uh, <laughs> very unsettling experience. I imagine. But no, uh, I'm trying to think because this is a really hard question. I, I'm hard. pretty yeah. sure I could be wrong on this, but I think it was the original Doom on the PC because uh. I used to, my grandparents used to own a ceramic store and, you know, back in his office in, in the store, he'd always play computer games and uh, Doom was one that he always played a lot and he had that on his PC home as well and he, a PlayStation, but it would be the PC version of Doom, I believe. Because I can't really recall anything, anything the, back then the only systems it would have been were the NES, but really no one in my family played the NES um, you know, when I went over uh, my uncle's house, it was mainly just me playing it, so I don't remember ever watching somebody beat a game. So, yeah, I'd say Doom on the PC. Jumble Jim? Junkie? <laughs> I'll just beat it, Doc. Um, I'd do Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the only game that I can think of, I, we had like a family friend, and they had a son, and he was probably like six, seven years old, and I was, and he was like one of those douches that like wouldn't let you play as nintendo it's like this man nintendo you can't play it you're too little yeah, exactly we don't know <laughs> any people things. like that yeah nobody uh, but i remember him beating mike tyson's punch out and mm. i remember him beating it like effortlessly like it was no big deal and then i like can i play he's like no my nintendo <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I remember like that's, that's like when I, uh, yeah that's, that's what he used to do that's to johnny 
Yeah, it's true. She should listen to the last podcast. I revealed what I did to Rob. Yeah, you were mean. mean to him. I listened to that. I was. I, well, yeah, we were talking about that, but he, he kind of deserved it, I think. <laughs> he deserved For no reason it. at all. <laughs> he deserved it. You hear that, Rob? My you way of saying, it. I love you. I love you. I made him enjoy it more when he got it. See, that's how good of a friend I was. I knew by holding it back from him that he would make him long for it more that when he got it, he would truly appreciate the experience more. And I think he did. Is that right, Rob? <laughs> he probably went home every night, curled up in a ball and just cried. Why? 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 <sighs> those are good times. I love <laughs> those. I love those good old memories. <laughs> type of thing so great question yeah thanks for the question excellent so we thought we'd just take this opportunity to answer some questions from the forums and uh, first of all we want to thank everybody who's actually asked a question in the forums and uh, we're going to get to a few of them today and uh, definitely keep the uh, questions coming we love answering them and uh, we love answering audio questions as well and you can send audio questions to uh, what is the damn email for that Jason contact at oldjinggamers.com that's exactly what I was looking for. Perfect. So, anyways, well, well, here's the first question from the gamers zero one, and he says, "Hey guys, absolutely love the podcast. Just asking the quick question: When did you all become serious about you know be- becoming collectors of video games? Kind of worded that, but a little strange. But that's his question: When did you become serious about becoming collectors of video games?" He says, uh, for himself, I became serious about two years ago. I was just curious about yourselves. Thanks, the gamers won. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of a cool question. I think that's like, you know, before you're just kind of like playing video games and you're like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll get a little bit serious about it. Jumble, what, do, what started you? Um, well, I've always been one, like every console I've ever owned, I've hung on to. I've never been one to trade them in or anything. So I've always held on to them. Um, so I, I guess I've been kind of doing it my whole life, just little by little, like, you know, growing up, you're a kid, you don't really have a whole lot of money. So each system, I only had a handful of games. So now obviously that I'm older, I think <laughs> I don't act like yeah. it, but yeah, you know, I can go out and buy games and stuff. And yeah, I, I'm guess I'm a pack rat kind of in a way, but like a neat uh, pack rat. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's not much more to say. I'm pretty boring with that one. Sorry guys. <laughs> Here. No, we'll, we'll go to an exciting one. Then we'll go to Pete door. Uh, well, here's the thing. Like when I started playing games when I was young, you don't. I didn't really realize that I was collecting the games because I was holding on to all of them. There was only maybe one or two points in my life where I traded in games to Funko Land, which was basically a large majority of my Sega Genesis collection, and that was it. Um, but it was probably when I was around eleven or I think I was about twelve or thirteen. Uh, I discovered the Digital Press website. Well, I didn't discover their actual website in the forums. I actually discovered their section of the website, which, by the way, Digital Press is like the website to go to for general video game collecting. There's a lot of sub for, uh, sites out there like Atari Age and, and stuff like that for certain categories of gaming. But Digital Press is known as basically the go-to for general video game collecting purposes. But I discovered their section first of just people's screenshots of their collections, you know, taking pictures and just uploading them to the website. When I discovered that, I literally was like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because I didn't know that there were people out there like this that had these gigantic video game collections um, and actually called it, you know, collecting video games. I hadn't thought of it that way until I saw the pictures. I I always just thought, you know, oh, I'm holding on to my games and all that. I never thought I was collecting. So I'd say once I discovered that website, it really inspired me to pursue it even more. It helped me discover a lot of old retro systems that I didn't know existed. It helped me sort of start to find a way to piece together the way my collection would look in terms of shelving and all that stuff. So definitely the discovery of digital press, and you can find that at digitpress.com. What about you, John? Uh, Very similar to both uh, Pete and Tim. I just, I don't, I've never really sold any games back when I've always held onto my systems. Uh, so I guess I, I've been really collecting my whole life since I've been playing games since I was very young, but like serious, like hardcore collecting probably after college, like 2004 time, uh, I had a good friend of mine. He commented at this point, I probably had like, I don't know how many systems, maybe like 25 consoles at this time. And he's like, dude, you got every console ever made. I'm like, 
No, I don't. But then I started I start doing some research online uh, and going to various websites um, and kind of doing, find, doing some homework. And I realized that there are so many different consoles out there and a majority of them, like no one's ever heard of. And that's what, you know, they're obscure. So uh, I, I guess my answer to like, you know, short answer to the question is um, 2004, I, I started really diehard collecting consoles and, and games and stuff like that. But I've always been a gamer my whole life and I've always been kind of holding on to stuff as, as time goes on. So that is uh, my response. Um, and let's go to Jason. Definitely similar to all of your answers. I just never sold anything. Even when I remember back when trading in games kind of became uh, something new, you know, you can trade in to get games. Um, but yeah, so I just never got rid of anything. It was probably in the late 90s, um, probably 98 or 99. And all my friends would always come over. My house was the place where everyone always wanted to be because I had all the games. I kind of had that environment going. Everyone would come and be like, holy crap, you have so many games. It's crazy and consoles and this and that. They even like nicknamed it Jason's Game Cinema for a while there. And people would, I was like, man, I need to start charging you to come in and play these things. And I had multiple TV set up and it was a really cool, cool thing. But I mean, really just to answer the question, I never sold anything. But then after that, that's when I said, you know what? Why don't I preserve it and um, continue on and completing some collections and this and that? And so I'd say right around that 2000, 98, 99, 2000, somewhere in there, it just happened. And I started collecting and researching and I got heavily into eBay around that time too, selling for other people, making a ton of money doing that to help feed my <laughs> my addiction. So yeah, it was, it was a really cool time. So that would be... Uh, my answer. Jeez, yeah, I guess that gets to, to me. Same as you guys. It's got to be the same stuff. But I didn't really realize I was even a collector either until, you know, years into, I guess, you know, when I kind of looked around, I went, wow, I, I do have a lot of games. And I kind of realized it when people come over and they're like, man, you got a lot of games. Like, is this all you do? And I'm like, I and mean, back then you get kind of insulted for it. You know, you had a bunch of games and you're a bigger nerd or something like that. And uh, I never looked at it that way. I just thought, well, this is the stuff I like and I don't want to get rid of it like I, I had some like nostalgic value to these games and i ended up having a lot of nostalgic value to a lot of games and i i didn't want to get rid of any of them and they just kept building up and building up and uh, i still don't think of myself as a hardcore collector like in the sense of some people have to have you know an entire super nintendo collection or an entire genesis collection like some people we've actually had in the show and i i think it's amazing to have something like that but i just kind of go in games that i've actually played that i actually like that's kind of where I, I collect, and I, I always recommend that to anybody. Some people are like, you know, I want to start collecting video games, but I don't know what to collect. Well, collect what you like. That's the number one thing you should always do. Don't collect for the sake of collecting. That's just kind of boring, you know? But at least have some kind of passion in it. So, um, yeah, that was my question. Thank you, the gamer one for the question. Very cool. Well, guess what, guys? I have a question. Thanks for letting me read one. And this one comes from... Pete Doors Big Banana. <laughs> <laughs> I got to cut. This is actually a real question from a real guy called <laughs> Pete's Banana. Pete Doors Big Banana. Hello, why do you guys let Pete Door hate on anime? Saying stuff like Naruto or Naruto, Naruto, I don't know how to say that. I don't even know who Naruto is. Is for kids when <laughs> anime is amazing to adults as well. P.S. Do you think Pete Dorr has a big banana too? Well, hmm. Mm. Well, first of all, <laughs> this guy obviously doesn't know me because he'd know that I actually highly enjoyed the Naruto uh, anime series. I, I watched like 120 or something, 150 something episodes of the series. Um, I own the game on PS3 and highly enjoyed that as well. I reviewed it on my channel. And I love to watch anime myself, so I'm not really sure <coughs> what. He might have a point, though, actually. Have you actually got the Naruto games on the 360? <laughs> um, well, I have. The, uh, I do have one on the 360. I haven't played it. Though. Oh, there's actually two. Gotcha, on the Pete Door. Yeah. You're in the cross. <laughs> Bust it. Damn it. Damn it. You are busted. Busted. In, in your banana. Yeah, How's your banana? I think it's huge. <laughs> His banana is not doing it because, guess what? The whale is at Heine's house. Ooh, ah. Oh. Sorry, Pete's Big Banana is out to lunch. <laughs> yeah, he's always <laughs> hating on anime on the podcast. I don't think I've ever heard... I've never heard you hate on anime. 
I've never heard I like that. Adam. Yeah, I think he's referring to the episode where I said uh, uh, when we were talking about new game releases coming out, and I'm like, oh, and for the three people that care, there's a new Naruto. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Uh, people yeah, like really right. analyze things. That's a good thing, though. People are listening and analyzing. So, are you one of those three people that care, Pete? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you're one of the three that care. <laughs> so, there's two other two people out there now. That's funny. No, and Naruto okay. is a great series. Anime. I Naruto love. is. I'm actually with you. I've actually watched um, all of the, up to episode 140, the first season, like the first series, I'll say. And then it got all into that filler crap, and that's oh, I, I lost, lost interest in the fillers. Exactly, everybody I did. the whole series up until then. And I'm the kind of person where I ain't skipping those fillers. All right, I'm watching every episode, and I just but it's filler. There's nothing you're, you're missing. It's not yeah, part of the actual original. Story. I know, but then I feel like I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm just that kind of person. I wouldn't be. Yeah. I couldn't skip fillers. Yeah, is it like Dragon Ball Z where they take 20 episodes to accomplish? Oh, nothing? it definitely is. It definitely is. <laughs> but I enjoy it much more than Dragon Ball Z was a little bit childish. Where somebody would be going, like, doing this for like an entire episode going, uh, and then everybody would be staring at each other, you know, for an entire episode where this we used, grunt. Yeah. We used three this, this, cells of animation on this episode. Three cells of animation. <laughs> so it's over well, people 5, will probably, uh, before the people uh, try and correct you, there is Dragon Ball Kai, I believe, which is essentially a like remake. streamlined. Re, I guess remake. I haven't watched it, but from what I understand, they basically take out all that crap and they speed up. The yeah, I didn't like the new opening, so I just I didn't I didn't give it very much of a chance, which is kind of yeah. Don't judge a book by a cover, but I did. I didn't really like the new opening, but oh well. And by the well, way, we well should said. mention we are now an explicit podcast, you motherfuckers. So you, <laughs> Yo! <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> love it. it. <laughs> the podcast is now tagged explicit. That's fucking amazing. Hey, Pete's going all NWA on us. That's yeah, and it's, it's a side of Pete I've never seen. That's hilarious. <laughs> and That's funny. I feel like swearing all the time now because I know we fucking can't. <laughs> <laughs> the title of this podcast is going to just be called Fuck. And that's <laughs> I like it. double dumbass on you. We got to get a picture of, of Jason and the whale with like a headphone mic, like doing the music. Sometime. Yeah, get your whale well, on. I think I can. Your, uh, we're gonna yeah, have to work that out. I like him. All right, good questions. <laughs> Fucking good great questions. question. Fucking awesome. amazing. <laughs> I feel unchained because of uh, Pete now. Now we can quite literally do anything we want. And now it's the time of the podcast for love talk with John Millennium. Johnny, how are you ready? Always ready. This is a serious question, John. We've got a very serious question for you. And it's by that guy without glasses. All right. So there's this girl who used to go to school with me two years ago. We were friends, but not very close. And I had a huge crush on her. The thing is, I never had the balls to ask her out. And then the next year, she went to a different school. And they were both in grade 10. And I've been having on and off feelings towards her for about a year. She currently is in a relationship, but I have no idea if I should ask her out or not. I have no idea how to. I know everybody thinks I'm, it's lame to ask someone out over the internet or phone, but, but I'm friends with her on Facebook. Never remember. And obviously, I can't really meet up with her and ask her face to face. I don't know how to ask her out and what to say, though. I would be pretty weird. It, it would be pretty weird if I just phoned her out of the blue after not seeing her for about two years. I text her like once a year or so. I'd really appreciate your advice, Johnny. Please, Johnny, what should I do? This is such an easy one to answer, too. I think any of you guys could answer it as well. It's this guy went to school with this girl like a couple of years ago. She's moved to another school now. They're both in grade 10. And uh, he has her on Facebook and he's still thinking about her. And meaning, what that means is he hasn't moved on. He hasn't actually met anybody. So that's why he's thinking about this girl from the past. Which is not a bad thing. It's okay to be hung up uh, with people in the past. Um, but he's wondering if he should ask her out over Facebook. Uh, or, or, he, or he almost scared me there. He said he was going to do a cold call. Don't do that. Number one, I think he realized that. Don't phone out of the blue somebody you haven't talked to in, you know, in a couple of years or whatever. And say, hey, remember me? That That's not going to go well. So don't, don't do that. You'll scare her. You know, her parents will be blocking you on the phone. 
Um, but you do have her on Facebook and that creates a kind of a good opportunity, but it doesn't create an opportunity for just messaging her and saying, Hey, how you doing? You want to go out? Don't do that. That's also very, very bad. But what you can do is say, Hey, it's, it's cool to see you. You know, I, I haven't taught you in a while. You know, uh, you know, I, I got you on my Facebook here. I just want to say, Hey, you know, how are you doing? Let her do the talking. See what she has to say. If she's interested, um, in even a friendship, she'll kind of let you know. She'll let you, oh, she'll be like, oh, everything's fine, thanks. That's not a good sign. But if she's talking to you for a bit, and you are going back and forth, and it feels pretty good, and you're feeling you're kind of building something on this, you can always say, hey, I know you kind of live far away, because this girl is kind of far away. Do you know, do you want to go hang out and do something totally mutual, this is friends type of thing, and uh, go see a movie, go go out to a public place, do something like that. Uh, go bowling, even though bowling is freaking boring. Sorry for all you bowlers out there. Um, go, go do something um, that's out there in public so she feels like pretty cool and all that. And then take it from there. That's how this stuff works. There's, there's no magic line to pick somebody up. Isn't that right, guys? There's no magic line. Yeah, there's no set rules. No. No. I always go to a girl. And, I'm sorry to interrupt, Johnny, but I always yeah, go to yeah. a girl. God damn you. And, uh, <laughs> and besides the dog parks, you know, which I, you know, I love to go to back oh, in the day. Um, <laughs> I usually go up to them. I say, uh, nice shoes. Want to fuck? And then it just, <laughs> oh, it, they say, they usually say yes. And, and we're pretty good. They're like, oh, I'm glad you like my shoes. And now this is the dogs you're talking about, right? So the dogs are like telepathic and talk to you and say, yes. Yeah. I'm into the yeah. sex with you. <laughs> Interesting. It's no, a good way to meet dogs. In, in all <laughs> In all seriousness, though, uh, John, I think you nailed it. I think just uh, you got to meet in like, kind of a public area. And I don't know if I would say just as friends because you don't want to get into that friend zone like we talked about no, last no, podcast. No, no, I understand that. But you say you want to basically put it so they kind of let their guard down. That It's not expectations on their part that they have to come out and like provide a sexual service. You know, yeah. You know what might be good just to maybe, you know, PM her on, on Facebook. Say, hey, we haven't talked in a while. And I'd really like to you know maybe meet up and then catch up. Yeah, exactly. You know, something simple. Yeah. Simple, and you can do it yeah. simple like that too absolutely you know you can I, I'm sorry, I kind of like I kind of like to put kind of so I, just, I, I like to fish out there and to kind of see what kind of reaction I would get I'm not going to message somebody and say hey you want to hook up and hang, you know, hang out and she'd be like no <laughs> and you're like oh I'm a loser right. you know it, it, you're kind of putting yourself out there you, you really want to let her kind of guide the conversation to do that because you're cold calling her she's not cold calling you it's a totally different thing so I don't know. What do you guys think? What would you do, Jumble Junkie, in this situation? Hmm. Well, I'm one of those. Move on. It wasn't meant to be. If she wanted to, she'd be like... So you gotta let the girls... See, I'm one of those people. Let the girls come to you. I'm one of those weirdos because... Uh, I'm kind of like that too, but... um, Yeah, yeah, I I don't know. That's where I'll stand. (laughs) Let the girl come to you. Well, no, it's kind of the the whole naturality of it, right? I um, understand. Like, there's a girl that you really like and you you can't get out of your head. I mean, we've all been through that and... Yeah. At the end of the day, I know me personally, it's it's never happened. It's just never got anywhere, even if you tried. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Don't cold call. Don't be, you know, oh, let's hang out. Just let her do it. Let her... Let her come to you. Yeah, don't seem desperate. That's the thing. You can't. That's why I say you say, "Hey, let's just hang out as friends." You show that you're confident and just want to have, build a friendship because that's what you have to build first of all, anyways. If you if you actually like this girl, you want to like date her. Let me let me just tell you, I uh, I was let's see how old was I? I was like twelve. I cold I did I cold called a girl. Wow. Have you guys ever done it? Of course. Uh, it was the first time. And the yep. last time I ever did that shit, <laughs> it was the most awkward experience. And it was, I, I hung up the phone just feeling like the biggest dumbass on the planet. But Especially you know what? You because tried. she wasn't into me at all. She you didn't tried. Even, I tried. I, I thought if I'm going to do, I mean, now this is back before, you know, the internet for Christ's sake, yeah. you know, I, know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't poke them on Facebook. Oh no. Yeah. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, What's this? what else am I going to do? I don't want to talk to her in school. I'm too scared. So I'll just call her. What yep. the fuck? That was the dumbest move I could have ever done. <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? Like, yeah. It's really sad. Don't make fun. <laughs> I'm gonna. I cold called a girl one time. She got back from like a 98 degrees concert, and I called her and just to be like, "Oh, that's so awesome!" Like I pretended that 98 degrees was really cool. <laughs> so, that's what, so I could possibly like go out with her. Sometimes you got to yeah. put in the work though to do that. I feel you. Yeah. You got to put in the work. <laughs> Not you gotta do what it takes. Jumbo, <laughs> yeah. what what happened in your situation? Did she she, she bite on it or not? 
No, no, absolutely not. No, I was just <laughs> a loser pretending to like 98 degrees. <laughs> I, actually, one of my friends was amazing. <clears throat> he had the like we'd go to nightclubs and he had the he had the shittiest one liners and I couldn't believe they always worked. And he did it sarcastically and because he completely didn't believe in what he was saying. Like, you remember that show Party of Five? Yeah, sure. Lacey and all those yeah, that, people. Yeah, and a really old crappy show, okay? It was really, really not a great show. And he and it was a very popular show at the time. And he'd go up to some girl, or even I remember him going to like a, a bunch of girls. I'm like, he'd be like, hey, ladies, how you doing? And they're like, yeah, okay. He's like, he's like, do you ever guys watch, you know, do you ever watch Party of Five? And they're like, oh, yeah. And he's like, he goes, I love Party of Five. He's like, oh, can you believe that, <laughs> Bailey? And he was in. I couldn't believe it. I sit there in shock and I'd be like, I couldn't. How does he do that? That's amazing. Confidence. And He's got confidence. He, had that's, that's he didn't is, care yeah. at all. He didn't care at all. And uh, my problem is I'm a caring, loving human being. Bullshit. Except for when it comes to video games and Rob. At least consoles, new consoles. <laughs> yeah. There's no love and there. Shit's out, video games. Shit's out the- <laughs> sit outside in the cold. I'm playing Super Mario Brothers. Oh, there you go. Mario Mario. That's how you pronounce it. That's Mario. <laughs> tomato, tomato. So, anyways, I hope that answers your question. That guy without glasses, and we're not, we weren't joking. That's, that's actually some true advice going your way. Definitely. Good luck. It's good luck. Welcome to another episode of Gaming Peace Theater with Gamester81. Gamester, what piece of gaming history are you going to share with us today? Okay, so so this week in Gaming Peace Theater, we have a question by Nate Great Three Two One. He's been active in the community for a while. I've known him on YouTube for a while. Good guy. And his he wanted to know more about the Pioneer Laser Active player. Uh, do you guys know anything about this uh, Pioneer Laser Active player? So yeah, curiosity, I'm, anyone? Yeah. Okay, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's actually my preference of choice to play my Genesis on. Believe it or not, it was released by Pioneer, obviously, nineteen ninety three. Uh, and it, the, essentially what it did is it played Laserdisc, which if you guys remember Laserdisc, right? Those big ass, most record size playing discs that you would flip over halfway between the movie. It was kind of right after VH1 or VHS, right before DVDs were popular. Uh, and this player was essentially, it was first and foremost, it was a Laserdisc player. It re- retailed back in 1993, get this guys, uh, for $970. Oh man. That's so like 14 wow. years ago, right? Uh, 15 years ago. So I don't know how much that is today with inflation, but that's just an arm and a leg. Uh, now, if you want it, the reason why it's kind of mentioned in gaming is because they actually had Sega and they had NEC, uh, TurboGrafx, who made the TurboGrafx-16. They had what they called packs. And what they put, they were these attachments that you actually slide into this laser display that would enable you to play either Genesis games or, or uh, Sega CD games. Or if you want to play TurboGrafx 16 games or TurboGrafx CD games, it was pretty cool. But get this: the packs alone cost six hundred dollars each. Whoa! So if you're looking at a total investment of like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars just for the player and one of these packs, so would you go out and buy this back in 1993, guys? No, probably not. Probably Absolutely. not. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, amazing. <laughs> if, no. You could you could get a, a Laserdisc player and a Genesis for probably a third that price or less, oh, right? Um, easy, yep. easy. Um, so it didn't sell very very well because of that. It is a collector's item. Uh, there were games actually released for it as well. There's about three three uh, specific games for the player. Uh, it's really cool because that one thing I want to explain is when you plug in the CD, like if you want to play a Sega CD game, you open up this huge ass tray and there's you know the the, the disc laser disc tray is probably like maybe a little over a foot wide, okay? But yeah. inside there's a little area where you can put uh, a CD, so it's pretty cool. So you can put any, you can put an audio CD in there too. But if you have a pack inside, it will it will recognize that and it'll play as a CD game, which is kind of neat. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're worth, like I was saying earlier, there's 33 games specifically made for this player, uh, and these games are really hard to find. Uh, and you know they actually had 3D goggles for this thing as well, which is kind of interesting. And the goggles that were these glasses were actually compatible with a Sega Master System, which is interesting. Wow. So if you had any of those. Uh, and what else is to know about it? That's pretty much it. Um, there was a karaoke pack as well, so you could play karaoke music if you're into that. Uh, so it, I like, I just like Laserdisc. I, I think it's cool. It's kind of like it reminds I me love of the, Laserdisc. I'm a huge the, fan the records. Too. I'm a huge fan of vinyl records as well, just because the artwork and the sound of them. 
But I'm a huge yeah. fan of Laserdisc, like you, Johnny. And I, yeah. I watch Laserdisc. You know, I have a, I have a big collection. Uh, I don't know, maybe like 40 or so uh, movies. But yeah. this is what I prefer to play my Justice on. I enjoy it. And the games actually plug in upside down. It's kind of weird when you plug them in. They plug in upside down on the pack. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting. I have a review on my channel. If you guys want to see more about it, but. That is the Pioneer Laser Active player. Thank you for the question, Nate. Great three, two, one. And if you guys have more, please post them on the forums. I'll get to them. So, very cool. That is Gaming Peace Theater with me. Yeah, cool. Hey, before we end this podcast, I do want to say, Johnny, happy Yo. early birthday! I know your your birthday is in a couple of days. Uh, yeah, of thank recording you, man. This, right. So I hope I hope you have a good birthday. I don't know if you got it is January thirteenth. Or... Yeah. And here's one. Actually, this kind of relates to the forum. Um, wh- one guy actually uh, wrote to me and said, hey, I think he wrote in the forums that he's like, I'll take you on in Street Fighter. And uh, some, some, he lives in the States somewhere or something. And uh, I, I was just like, oh, OK, you know, like and he said to me, he said, actually, I'm coming up to v- Vancouver, you know, for a couple of days with my girlfriend. And I said, well, what's the dates? And he tells me the dates. And I'm like, well, you know why? I said, that's my birthday. I'm actually having a birthday party down the road from uh, game deals and all the game deals you know guys are there rob's gonna go there got a lot of people actually going so i said well you know what if you're around for that couple of days you should drop by have a drink or whatever so yeah he's gonna drop by so that's kind of a, an interesting thing it's it's funny how the internet can work right so uh i'll be meeting somebody off the the forums for my birthday but uh definitely thanks game sir thanks for remembering so nice of you you got a little Facebook. I looked on it today. I'm like, oh, let's just <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm but seriously, I, hope you, I hope you have a good birthday, man. I, seriously. Thanks, man. So, what, Thanks. Big 2 1, 21, turning, right? Yeah, I'm turning so. about, I'm turning 25. So <laughs> okay. I'm really excited about that. Times two, maybe. Times two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll never reveal my true age. I'm actually 26. Johnny, did you see the post on the forums about Dynamite Ducks? I did. Like, it made all- me laugh. Somebody th- thought that th- th- it was trolling, and the guy wasn't trolling. He was actually saying, "No, Dynamite Ducks the arcade game is good." And he actually, somebody put a link in. I'm gonna ch- check it out. I I gotta see Dynamite Ducks the arcade game. I'm gonna buy I, the fucking thing. I totally forgot that um, the Dynamite Ducks character is actually in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. He's and being he's in the- Dynamite the- Sonic the Fighters. Yeah. He's that green duck. I, I have a shirt yeah. with him on there. I didn't even know it. <laughs> you were wearing his fucking shirt advertising him. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. My, my most hated game ever, and you're wearing it around the house. You know, just advertising it to your mom and dad. No wonder the will left. Jeez. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Extra Large Condoms by Jason Song. Extra Large Condoms. Get on iTunes. Condoms. Yes. Get on iTunes. So where can you find awesome. that song again? It's like, you just look, look up. What is it again, Jason? The song's called Get Your Whale On. Get your whale on. You can search that. You can search my name, Jason Heine. It'll come up there. You can get it on iTunes and the iTunes store. It's available there now. But it also will be or is already available on Rhapsody, Napster, wherever you uh, stream your music or download your music for your MP3 players. It will be available there. There's about 50 different online retailers where it will be. So, wow, that's amazing. I, I, I downloaded Jason's uh, album. One of He has like, what, three albums or so plus a like Christmas one or and dude, good stuff, man. Good stuff. So check out his other stuff too. It's very talented. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Gamester. I'll check mm-hmm. that out. And uh, Tim, Jungle thank you for, Junkie, for join us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you for having me. And what would you like to plug, Jumble Junkie? Well, guys, you can catch me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jumble Junkie. My website, jumblejunkie.com. And show some love for the Operation Kill Screen podcast. We're on iTunes, operationkillscreen.com. Gotta get us on the podcast. What's going on with that? Well, we have a lot well. of small time. No, I was kidding. <laughs> no, you know, we're just getting our feet wet here. And um, I think once eventually we're going to... I don't know. You guys are busy. I don't want to bother everybody. We're not busy at all. We never said we were busy. Yeah, we're busy. No, we're not. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, Jumble, you're, you're like me. You have like, what, three channels of, on YouTube or four channels? I mean, you have your music channel. Oh, and you have man. Your yeah, I had my music channel. And that was just something I started as a joke. And somehow that managed to get partnered. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> Wait, and you <laughs> review music without actually playing the music, right? It's his music. I right? play like music. A lot of time. Yeah. I'm yeah, actually... He plays- I have, He's here's talented. A point, here's a little factoid about Jumble Junkie. Jumble Junkie... I'm, I'm a drummer. I, I'm like I'm like Heine over here. I, I play everything. Um, I am very into music. I, I people would almost say I'm more into music than I am into gaming. My CD collection is insane. <laughs> like my pack of cigarettes a week is a CD. So uh, 
yeah for i mean i was really into recording music i had my own bands um you know the, the real band thing never really worked out so I, that's why i turned to youtube for something to do because i was always in the video editing and animating and stuff and here we are that's crazy we have a lot in common tim i know i didn't Dude, know that. I the well. Sex. Deep. we should cyber sometime i mean we should talk sometime <laughs> yeah i mean i would love to see whatever you want to show me but do you like <laughs> do you like really bad grindcore music Probably not. We probably can't talk anymore now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen, you can talk. Dude, it's a- dude, you better watch out for the whale, though, Timmy. I mean, the whale's listening on, in on this, and you know how he is with the music now, and his, he wants to get into the music scene. I don't know. Maybe he it might really be collaboration. Wants, if he wants some nice Jackrabbit style music, he'd be all into the grind. You're tempting him. <laughs> I know it. I know what that whale's like. Left me in a heartbeat for, for uh, Pete. Left Pete in a heartbeat, and now going after the you know the creepy record producer. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> he always promises. I promise you big things, Whale. Big things, honestly. Yeah, you <laughs> see, I got your big things. I'll see the stars and the light. See, stars and the light. <laughs> I'll You're see sleeping you with the fishes. See, <laughs> unbelievable. That's where the whales ended up, and with a goddamn song, no less. Wow. Kind of <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah, just as the whale, off. now he's big time. He's going to be a platinum artist. Does he wear like a clock around his neck? <laughs> yeah, boy. Oh. Flavor Flav. <laughs> Flavor. Dude, I bumped into Flavor Flav in Vegas once. I tell you, that guy started this pretty fun. What? This clock knocked yeah. you out. Really? No, it was uh, that new, uh, the new casino there in Vegas. What's the Rhea, whatever it's called? I was there for work and hanging out with some friends, you know, and uh, called work colleagues. And sure enough, I turned my head, oh, there's all this commotion. I turned my head and like, what the fuck? It's Flavor Flav. He's got the clock and shit. He has his entourage of like women. He's like, what's up, boy? I'm like, hey, what's up? I got I got a picture I got on my uh, my regular Facebook. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. It's pretty, oh. my personal Facebook. It's pretty funny. It's pretty That's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. And then he saw Will Wheaton and he's like, get away from me. He got Wheaton. Yeah. You got Wheatons, I got, I got, yeah. I got Wheatons, yeah. Although, yeah. I'll never, yeah. I'll never forget that moment because I remember Games touched me on the shoulder. He's like, "Dude, you know, pan your camera over." He's like, "It's Will Wheaton," and uh, and you know he he met Will Wheaton before, and Will Wheaton just totally he's like looking around. He's like fucking beamed just, him down. Yeah, he weaned you. Just, just, just <laughs> unbelievable. He put it on, he put it on stun, and he just shot me, dude, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. He put it, you, you're not the first or last to have their heart broken by Will Wheaton. You know? Yeah. He is Will dreaming. Wheaton! You know? It's <laughs> 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 a big bang theory. I love that show. So, anyway. Hey, it was awesome, guys. Hey, yeah, thanks for times. joining. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, Pete, before we go, can you say fuck one more time? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, that was powerful. It was. Such I'm... enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> say with some more enthusiasm. <laughs> fuck. Oh, that's, like a I, that's, a that's a sexy like one. Point. That's a sexy one. That's a sexy one. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's like big banana fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. There you go. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Bye. Yeah. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get your way along. Drop down and get your way along, girl. Drop down and get it on. Drop down and get your way along.